in the bank. Today, we will study activities in the bank. Let's watch this video and see what people do in the bank. Situation 1. How to open a bank card. Excuse me? Yes, please. What can I help you with? I want to open a bank card. Could you help me, please? What kind of bank card do you want to open? I don't really know about it. Can you introduce about kind of card in your bank? Of course. Do you already have a bank account in our bank? Yes, I have used your bank for five months. Okay, let me tell you some information about our card service. Currently, we are providing different types of bank cards. Each kind of bank card suits you for a different purpose. First, we have a debit card. This is the most popular card in our bank. You can use a debit card to pay for goods and services with money in your bank account. Besides, you are also able to transfer your money to other people through this card quickly and safely. You will have to pay $2 each month to maintain your card. In addition, the money in the account needs to be bigger than $5. Will I have to pay a fee to open this card? No, you don't need to do that. It's free. I understand. Next, you will also open a new credit card. It allows you to borrow our money to proceed with your payment. You have to prove your main account and your monthly income to be approved for this card. Our bank has a lot of incentive for bank holders who uses a credit card. So, I recommend you using this type of bank card. That sounds interesting. I love this card. If you often use international payment, you can open a Visa card. It helps you conveniently purchase in foreign countries. Hmm. Actually, I never buy anything in other nations. So, which type of card will you choose among them? Credit card, please. Okay. Please fill in your information in this form carefully. Could you give me your identity card? Here you are. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. After filling this form, you can sit here and wait for me for about 15 minutes. Then you can go home and we'll send your credit card to the address you wrote in this form. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Situation 2. Withdraw money in the bank. Hello, sir. What can I do for you? Hi, my name is Ben. I want to withdraw my money. Could you help me, please? Yes, Mr. Ben. Firstly, I need some information about you to find your account in our system. Could you tell me your full name and your identity number? My full name is Ben Daniel. My identity number is 12463466. Here is my identity card. Okay, let me check. Here, I see. Ben Daniel. You have $5,000 in the bank right now. How much money do you want to withdraw? I need $3,000 now. My phone was crashed yesterday and it couldn't be repaired. So I need to buy a new phone. The shop requires me to pay in cash. Okay, Ben, I understand. Now I will proceed with your withdrawal procedure for you now. You want to have $3,000 cash, right? Yes, $3,000. Okay, your account balance is $2,000. Please wait for me for a while. I'll be back soon with your money. Okay. Here is your $3,000 and your bill. Please check them carefully before signing in this bill. Let me check it now. It is exactly the money I need. By the way, do you want to do anything else? No, I just need to withdraw money. So thank you for using our service. I hope you have a good day. Thank you so much. Situation 3. How to take back my bank account's password.
Good morning, sir. What can we help you with? Hello. Could you take my password back? I have not logged into my bank account on my phone since yesterday. Yes, but first, could you tell me your name and give me your identity card? I need to check your data in our system. Tom Gray, here is my identity card. Please tell me the last time you accessed our app successfully. I can't remember exactly when, maybe last week. I use your service to send my son some money. Do you receive any notification about your money is lost? No, I don't. Okay, it means your account isn't hacked by bad guys. Yes, how to recover my password? Don't worry, I'll reset your password for you. Then you can log in to your account normally. Your account name is Thomas, right? Yes, it is. Okay, please read this information. We will provide you a new password. You can change it anytime you want through banking app in your phone. Please remember that your password needs to include a capital, number, and at least eight characters. And please remember your new password. You can write it on a paper and keep it in a safe place. Okay, I got it. Here is your new password. You should try logging into your account on your phone by using the new password. Let me check. It's okay. Thank you for recovering my password. Is there any fee for it? No, Mr. Tom, it's free. Thank you for using our service. If you have any problems, please call 321-5324 to receive our help. Goodbye, sir. Situation 4. Borrow money from the bank. Number 48, please. I'm here. Good morning. What can I do for you? Hi, my name is Anna. I want to borrow money to open a new restaurant. Okay, Anna, could you give me your identity card and fill in your information in this form? Yes, here is my identity card. After that, please give me information about your collateral. Here, please. Hmm, let me see. Okay, this asset is acceptable. How much money do you want to borrow? It could be $5,000. I need to buy a lot of furniture and cooking equipment as well. Please fill this money in this form. Yes, I have filled it. Now you have to make a loan contract. It will include your personal document, namely a photocopy of your identity card, your current asset, collateral information. I already bring them here. Good, Anna. Let me check all of them one more time. They are okay. Please wait for a while. I'll bring you the money you need. Okay. Here is your money and a firm document. You should check this money and then sign in this document. Okay, this is $5,000. Thank you so much! You are welcome. Have a nice day, and I hope your restaurant will rapidly grow. Situation 5. How to deposit money in a bank. Good morning. Can I help you with something? Hello, I am Kim. I want to open a passbook to keep my money there. Have you ever used our service before? Yes, I currently have a bank account here. Okay, let me introduce about our service. You can open a passbook and deposit your money in our bank. The current interest rate in our bank is 12% a year. You can withdraw your money anytime you want. Besides, you will receive a lot of incentives when becoming a new passbook owner. Please fill in all your information in this form carefully. Okay, I will fill it now. How much money will you deposit? About $4,000 cash. I bring them here. Could you give me that money to check? Of course. Here, please. Okay, let me see. It's exactly $4,000. Could you lend me your identity card? 
I will use it to create a new passbook in our system. Yes, of course. Okay, I will take some minutes to proceed with this procedure. You can drink tea and wait for me. Hmm, I don't like to drink tea. I love coffee. Sorry, we don't have coffee for you. It's okay. I'll sit here and read more about your service. Okay, Kim. Thank you for believing in our service. English Conversation Visiting a Patient Let's watch this video to learn how to converse while visiting someone who is sick. Situation 1 Mary's family visits Uncle Jake in the hospital. Jake, Thomas's family came to visit you. Hi, Jake. Hi. Hi, little Mary. Hi, Uncle Jake. How are you, brother? Emily said you got food poisoning. Yes, I feel much better now. What happened? He had abdominal cramps. He kept vomiting and having diarrhea so many times the last two days. Why did you have stomach, Uncle Jake? Uncle Jake ate bad food, Mary. That's why you should only eat food your parents allow you to eat, okay? Yes. Mommy always tells me that I have to wash my hands before every meal or I will have a stomach. She is right. Did you eat something wrong, Jake? Well, Emily had a business trip for a few days. There was some food leftovers, and I put it in the fridge, but I forgot. I found it two days ago and thought it would still be good staying in the fridge, so I ate it. I think it was contaminated. I came home, and he had been already very sick. Once I realized he got dehydrated, I took him to the hospital. Jake, you should be really more careful with what you put in your mouth. I got it now, really. The last two days were horrible. We're glad that you get better now. Food poisoning can be very dangerous, if not treated in time. I hope you get well soon, Uncle Jake. Thank you, little Mary. Jake, I hope you will recover soon. We have to go now. Rest properly, okay? We will visit you again in a few days. Okay, Thomas, no problem. See you, little Mary. Goodbye, Uncle Jake, Aunt Emily. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Mary. Situation 2. Visiting Claire, who fainted and was exhausted from fasting. Claire, your friends came to visit you. Hi, Claire. Claire, how are you feeling now? Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming over to see me. I feel better now. We were worried today when you fainted in class. I'm sorry for making you all worried. It's okay, but what happened, Claire? You seem very tired these days. I tried to lose weight. I was on a diet last month, but it didn't work. I saw an intensive fasting program online and followed that program. Today is the third day of fasting. Your body must be exhausted from a lack of nutrients. Or you had low blood sugar because you starved yourself. I think you should not fast so suddenly every day. Instead, try to eat less each meal and exercise consistently. You're right. I should not rush to lose weight. We bring you some fruit. Now rest yourself. We hope you will recover soon. Okay. Thanks for visiting me. It is so kind of you all. Not at all. Rest, Claire. We have to leave now. See you soon. See you then. Bye-bye. Situation 3. Visiting Laura, who has a fever and stay at home. Laura, your friends came to visit you. Yes, Dad, let them in. Hi, Laura. Hi, I'm so happy to see you too. 
What's wrong with you, Laura? Our teacher said you were sick, so we come over to see you. I started to feel a bit weird yesterday night, but only until early morning today did I have a fever. Is it the flu? No, my mom said it is not the flu because I don't have other flu symptoms. Did you throw up? Yes, I did. My mom said I should have caught a cold from taking showers late. Has your fever gone? Yes, but my body seems very tired still. My mom said I had to rest at home for a few days, but the final exams are coming. Don't worry, Laura. I will come over and give you my notebooks every day after school, so you can catch up on with the lessons. My house is in the neighborhood anyway. Thanks a lot, Jane. Recover soon, okay? We haven't finished our discussion about the movie the other day. Jane and I are still waiting for you. Sure. We can continue right now, though. No, Laura, you need to rest. It's late. We have to go home now anyway, or our parents will be worried. We haven't told them we came to visit you. Okay, Jane. Thanks for coming. See you soon, then. Rest, Laura. Bye-bye. Bye, Laura. Bye. Situation 4. Visit John, who broke his leg while playing football. John, can we come in? Yes, please. Hi, hey, John. John. Hey, guys. How are you, John? I'm great. Just have a painful leg and be bored of being in bed all day. I heard from your mom that you broke your leg while playing football with the neighbor's kids. Yeah, that was a pretty bad fall. Did someone push you? No, a kid accidentally kicked me on the leg. How long will you be in a plaster cast? The doctor said it can be up to eight weeks. And for full recovery? Not sure, maybe four to five months. Mmm, such a long time. Right? Now I have a new friend, this Clutch. Trust me, Mr. Frank won't like this news. Without you, it'll be a loss for the whole school football team. I feel so sorry, but now I can't do anything with this broken leg. It's okay. Your top priority right now is to rest and limit movement to recover as quickly as possible. Sure, I will. Sorry, John, but we can only be with you for a while. We have to go now. You know our football team has a practice session today. We will update you on your situation with the whole team. No problem. You can visit me next week when I come home. We have plenty of time. Sure. See you, John. Bye. Bye, John. Bye-bye. Situation 5. Visiting Betty after her minor surgery. Hi, Hi Betty. Betty. Hi, everyone. Betty, how are you? Jack told us you got surgery this morning, so we planned to visit you in the afternoon. Yeah, why didn't you tell us? We bring you some fruit. Thanks a lot, girls. I'm fine. Don't worry. I didn't tell you because it was just a minor surgery. What's wrong with your hand? Why did you have to take surgery? Do you remember the bump near my wrist? Oh, that one? What is it? It's a gangolian cyst. Is it dangerous? No, it's not. If it is not dangerous, why surgery, though? Normally, these cysts are painless, but the doctor said mine was a bit big and it pressed on a nerve, making me feel pain whenever I turned my wrist. Did the doctor say what caused it? He said mine could be from joint injury. I used to hurt my wrist while playing tennis a long time ago. How are you feeling now? The anesthetic has worn off, so I'm feeling pretty painful right now, but still tolerable. How long will your wrist be back to normal? The doctor said it takes two to three weeks for the pain to go away, but it can take up to six months for my wrist to turn around normally. I will need to exercise it. 
All right, Betty. We are glad that you don't have a serious health problem. We will leave now and let you take a rest, Betty. Okay, thanks a lot for visiting me today. Goodbye, girls. Bye-bye. Stress and Relaxation Stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can affect your health a lot. Let's watch the video and see three friends talk about their stress. Hello guys, how are you doing? All good. What a dress! I really like its color. Hi Emma! Where did you buy it? JS store in the east of the city. That is the new store in the city. It looks gorgeous. How much does it cost? $129. It's discounted 30%. It has the colors red, purple, blue, and black. If you really like it, you should go to the new store to buy it as soon as possible. It will be sold out soon because they just released 1,000 at all. Should I buy it? Does it fit me? You should go there to try. Ah, you can come to our home. Then you can try mine. We have the same size, don't we? Sure, I will take you home. Chris, what's wrong with you? Why do you look so tired? Nothing much. I heard that you just broke up, didn't you? Yes, one month ago, Chris. But I'm okay with it. We broke up in peace. We are still friends. Last week, I still went to his birthday party. I think it's weird. Being friends with an ex-boyfriend? Are you kidding me? Hey, come on. It's common. We still support each other in our business. Ignore this one. Chris, tell me what happened with you. Come on, we're best friends. You should tell us your problem. Then you know, Emma and I can help you handle it. Money? Boyfriend? Or whatever? Nah, nah, it's because of my job. What? I think you like it so much. I remember that you leave the company near your house to take that job. What happened? We have a problem with my colleague. I had to create five ideas for new products. I prepared them on my planning note, then sent them to him, my designer. And then? Then he did it for me. But you know, all the target files were not accepted. Because the size was not corrected. When I uploaded them on the system, they look so terrible. So how did you fix them? I haven't fixed them yet, because if I want to change files, you have to have access to admission from the manager. I am stressed out because of it, and now he blamed it on me. But it's not your fault, bro. It's mine, because I take responsibility for checking quality and uploading. Next time you must be careful. Don't trust anyone totally. Yes, I got it. I will be minus commission this month. No worries, it gives you some lessons and you will have more experience. Everything has its price. Stress will affect your health, actually. Do you think which are the main reasons for stress? For me, it's my job. Overtime every day making me stressed out. I just come back home at 9.30 p.m. Are you paid for the over hours? Absolutely she will. It should be following labor law. No, it's my choice. I cannot complete my tasks in the working time, so I should try my best to achieve my KPI. Chris, you should take your time for yourself. If you get stressed for a long time, it will be a big problem. Stress causes mental health problems, such as depression, anxiety, and personality disorders even obesity and other eating disorders. Really? It's so bad? Yes, it can affect your skin and hair as well. 
like acne and permanent hair loss. <sighs> My job makes me stressed as well. You know I'm a freelancer, right? Because of the COVID situation, I don't have many clients as I had. But I see you are always happy. It's just the outside performance. I always want to inspire everyone. So if you are feeling stressed, what do you do? I go to bed. It is my best way to reduce stress. Then when I wake up, I will have some healthy food for myself. Something like fruits and vegetarian food. I find out that it's not helped me to reduce it, but also have smooth skin and a fit body. Cool, Lily. What about you, Emma? If you are feeling stressed, what do you do? Me? I am not usually stressed out, but when my mood is going down, I will take time for myself. I will do everything I love, such as reading my favorite books, watching a movie, or meditating. I think you should try to meditate. It makes you happy inside and beautiful outside. Chris, do you often do exercise? Not really. I super like walking, but you know I don't have time. Chris, take time for yourself. Go home early and do exercise. It will reduce stress and you can practice your mental health as well. Having a lucid brain makes you work more effectively. Yes, I understand. Thanks for your advice. And smile. Don't forget, laughter is the best medicine. Yes, yes, that's right. See you. Show me your happy face. You should focus on your symptoms, both in emotion and physical. Like, do you feel bad about yourself? Lonely, worthless, and depressed? Do you see yourself having headaches, chest pain, and cold or sweaty hands and feet? When you see yourself have these symptoms, your body and mind really need to relax. Don't forget that you should think positively always. It is one of the best ways to avoid stress. But you know, it's not easy. I cannot achieve the aims. I cannot... Hey Chris, listen. Sometimes, positive is not perfection, sweetie. It must be that you can accept everything you don't expect. That's right. If you have any problems, don't forget to share them with us. Come on, we are friends. If you don't talk about anything, we will be upset a lot. All right, I know. Thank you so, so much for helping me. Come on, you do that again. I have to give you a penalty note. Remember, we are friends. Friends always help each other. Do you want to order anything else? I just feel so hungry. They have red velvets, a bestseller. Really? I haven't tried it here. It's the new one, absolutely. <laughs> Wanna try? You know me, absolutely. And you, Chris? I will have ginger cookies set. Okay, I will go order. Show me your smile, Chris. And it's on me. Hmm, look, you are so pretty when smiling. Thank you. Wait for me. Childhood Lie have you ever been lied to when you were a kid? Let's watch the video and see what lies are about. John, Lucy, and Clarks respectively tell their story about one time they have been fooled when they were kids. John, have you been fooled by your parents when you were a kid? Yeah, absolutely. I still remember what happened when I was four years old. That's a long story. Come on, buddy. Tell us. Yeah, I'm really curious. Okay. That was when I was going home on the first day of kindergarten. It was my dad who walked me home. At that time, my family lived in the countryside and the kindergarten was not far away from my house. So I always went to the kindergarten on foot every day. 
I told him I don't want to go to kindergarten, and I prefer to stay at home. He said to let him discuss with mom first before answering me. I once wished I had grown up in the countryside. I love rice fields and camping in the mountain a lot. I have never been to the countryside. Will you take us there, John? Yes, but let me finish my story first. Things would go fine until we passed a really weird manhole cover. It's painted yellow with the face of Pac-Man on it. It. I felt so funny and told my dad about it. You're so childish, John. Yeah, I know. But the story was not just that. My dad turned to a poker face, and he told me he would reveal the truth. He said he wasn't my own father, but he had brought me home from that manhole cover on a summer night. Mom didn't tell me because she was afraid I would be sad. What? No way! Did you believe that? Of course, yes. My parents had never lied to me before. And I trusted them. I was shocked by this and cried a lot on the way home. My dad said I shouldn't be worried because my parents loved me a lot and would never abandon me. But I was still scared. I told him I would be obedient and went to the kindergarten. Your dad shouldn't have told you that. That's hurtful. I agree. Yeah. After that, I became an obedient child because I was scared of being kicked out of my house. This is why I didn't dare tell my mom until I entered primary school. My new grade one teacher asked the whole class on day one to write down our birthday on the class information paper. I told her, "I don't have a real birthday." And this is a complicated story. Was she angry? No, she tried to ask me, but I didn't tell her anything. And then one of my friends from the kindergarten said loudly before the class, "He doesn't know his birthday because his parents brought him home from the Pac-Man manhole cover. Nobody knows his birthday." What did your teacher do at that time? The teacher was confused. After class, she called my mom to clarify it. My mom had no idea what was going on. She was like, "What? No way! He's my son, my only son, and I gave birth to him." Your dad should be worried. Yeah, the rage of that woman. My mom then scolded my dad a lot for saying that, and didn't say a word to him for a month. For me, I felt serene because finally, I knew that I was my mom's true son. Wow, I didn't expect that you could believe it for so many years. I was also told a lie once when I was a kid, but. It didn't hurt as much as you. Tell us your story. Okay. When I was a kid, my mom and I lived in my grandparents' house because my dad was away. They had a cat called Mina, a female one. I felt so lonely because I didn't know those kids in the neighborhood, and she was there to cheer me up and play with me. However. One morning, after waking up, I tried to find her as usual, but I found out she had disappeared. Did she leave? Yeah, kind of. I asked my mom where she was, and my mom told me that Mina had head to Los Angeles with her godmother. She wanted to become an actress. <laughs> What? The cat wanted to become an actress. Ridiculous. 
At that age, I did believe that I could talk to her for real. Although I lost my best friend, I convinced myself that was good for her because she might become a superstar one day. You're such a girl with an angelic heart, Lucy. I agree. You guys know what? Two years later, I thought it was Mina when I saw a poster from the movie Dog and Cat. I still wondered if I might be wrong until the day it came out to the public. When I saw Mina acting in that movie, I was so moved. My little sister did it. She finally became an actress. I boasted about this all over the school and felt so proud until... Until... Until I was in grade 8, my family went to my grandparents' house to celebrate Thanksgiving. I told my grandpa about the successful actress Mina, but he turned to me and said with a gentle voice, My sweetie, I'm sorry, but Mina died on the night before the day when your mother told you she was away. Oh my dear Lucy, it is such a sad story. Yeah, I felt truly depressed after that. What about you, Clark? Did you have any similar experiences with us? When I was a little kid like you guys, I was really curious about my parents' occupations. I asked Dad, hey Dad, what do you do for a living? And he told me he was an architect. He still loves his job until today. However, when I asked him about my mom's job, he didn't answer. I cried and forced him to tell me mom's job or I would never play with him again. He laughed and murmured, Your mother's occupation is top secret. You mustn't tell this to anyone, okay? Okay, Daddy, you have my words, I said. Then he put an arm onto my shoulder and said, Your mom works for the CIA. Remember to keep it a secret because if other people know it, your mom will get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> and you believe that? Of course. For six years, six years that I kept my mom's secret job. You didn't ask your mom about it, did you? He didn't do it. You know him, John. Finally, I found out the truth. One day, my family went to the ice cream shop. I turned to my mom and smiled. Hey mom, I know your secret. You don't have to hide it from me. I'll protect you. Mom was like, What are you talking about, Clark? I told her dad had told me the truth and she worked for the CIA and promised her I wouldn't tell anyone from six years ago. Mom was angry and scolded dad on the way home. He laughed. Ha ha ha. It was a kid's story long ago. I don't think that our son believes it. I guess we were all fooled by our parents. But they are so memorable, right? Yeah. I think it's too late now. I have to go home and prepare my meal. Okay, bye Lucy. See you next time. Bye everyone. Future Continuous Watch this video to learn how to use present continuous sentences in real life. Dialogue 1. Mel is planning to go on a hiking trip this weekend. She tries to convince Laura, her classmate, to tag along. Hi, Laura. What are you doing? Nothing much. Just trying to finish the homework we got today. Already? It's not due until next week. 
Well, I want to spend my weekend doing something else other than studying. That makes sense. Talking about the weekend, have you already made any plans for it? Not really. Why? My family and I are going on a hiking trip. Will you be willing to join us then? That sounds nice. What time will you guys be leaving? We actually will be leaving right about this time on Saturday. Um, I don't know if I can make it. Let me ask my mom first. Sure, take your time. But let me know by Friday night, okay? I will be waiting for your call then. Okay, sounds good to me. Hello, Mel? Yes, hey Laura. Have you made up your mind yet? Yes, I asked my mom and she agreed to let me go. So, I will be joining you guys tomorrow on the trip. Awesome! We will be waiting for you around 8 a.m. Is that fine? Totally. It is perfect. Do you mind if I bring my brother Edward as well? My mom wants me to take care of him. Sure, we have another seat in the car for him. Great. By the way, remember to wear hiking shoes. It is going to be a long hike. Got it. See you tomorrow, Mel. Good night. See you, Laura. Good night to you, too. Dialogue 2 It is Nathan's fifth birthday soon. His parents, Todd and Eve, are going over the plans for his celebration party. Todd, did you forget to order the cake? Oh, I totally forgot. Don't worry, honey. I will be paying a visit to the local bakery this time tomorrow, while you decorate the house. Remember it, Todd. I don't want to mess this party up. Oh, relax. It is going to be a great party. Nathan and his friends will be having so much fun here this Sunday. You are right. But can we at least go through the list of things needed to be prepared first? Sure, honey. All right. You will be ordering the cake tomorrow. What about the balloons? I already bought them and will be blowing them up before the kids come. Ah, good, good. What about food? Will we be serving pizza or pasta for this party? I think pizza will be better, because they can use their hands to eat it. It will not make such a mess. Good idea. What will we be doing to entertain them? I bought a new projector to show them a superhero movie. That should do the job. Perfect! I think this plan is pretty solid. Should we send out the invitations now? No, I will be sending out the invitations directly to the kids' parents when I take Nathan to school this week. Oh, yeah, we should do that. Now, you need to have a rest. You are too worried about this party. Well, I want my son's birthday party to be perfect. It will be, I promise you. <sighs> I trust you, honey. Dialogue 3 Tom and Brian are thinking of surprising their friend, Daniel, by paying him a visit at his house. Tom, do you think it is fine for us to show up at Daniel's house unannounced? It is fine. Why are you asking that? Are you worried? Yes. Will he be busy working when we arrive? I checked with his girlfriend and she told me he should not be busy doing anything when we arrive. Hmm. I guess that it is fine then. Yes. Do you want to bring some drinks over? It has been a long time since all three of us are gathering. I know, right? It has been too long. What will you be doing at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow? I will be working by then, why? I was going to ask you to go to the grocery store with me to buy some drinks, but I can go on my own as well. No, I can leave work early. Let's go together. Awesome. I will pass by your office, okay? Sounds good. I'm so excited to hang out with you guys. Me too. The last time we met was for Christmas, and that was half a year ago. Time really flies, doesn't it? <laughs> it's because you were always busy, bro. We could have met a few times since then. 
<laughs> My bad. I just have so many projects going on lately. But you know what? I will be finalizing them this time next month, so I should have more time to hang out by then. Sure, bro. You say that and then disappear every single time. Haha, <laughs> they promise this time is different. Sure, Mr. Workaholic. See you tomorrow. See ya. Dialogue 4 Mia's family is leaving for London soon. However, she tells Clara, her friend, that she will not join them. Mia, are you leaving for London tomorrow? London? No, I am not. Only my parents are going. Oh? Why so? I thought you told me you loved London last time you visited. Well, I will be taking my college entrance exams when they are away. I need to prepare for them as well. I see, but where will you be staying then? Or will you just be home alone? I will be staying with my grandma in the meantime. My parents never let me stay home alone on my own. Ah, that's good. If not, you can always stay at my place. I have a spare bedroom in my house ready for you. Thank you so much. Maybe I will crash at your place for a few nights. But I also want to spend some time with my grandma, so I will mainly be staying at her place. That's perfectly fine. Let me know whenever you want to come over. Sure. By the way, how long will your parents be away? They will be staying in London for over a month. A long time, isn't it? Yes, I will miss them a lot. At the Wedding Ceremony A wedding is an occasion which marks two people are united in marriage. Let's watch this video and explore what may happen at a wedding. Dialogue 1. A Sad Wedding Congrats to you, Rachel. Today must be the happiest day of your life. Thank you, Tim. Wait, Rachel. You look quite tired. Are you feeling unwell? Would you like to eat something or drink a cup of tea? It may make you feel better. No, Tim. I'm okay. Actually, I am not happy now. I just know a bad thing about my husband, David. I need some advice now. Could you help me, Tim? Of course, Rachel. Please tell me what is this. Yesterday, I used David's phone to watch a movie because my phone was charging at this time. While I was watching the film, David's phone received a new message from a strange number. I read this message and it was, I miss you, David. It was a big shock. I decided to read more messages from this number on the phone. Unbelievable. All the messages were very intimate. Then I realized that this was the number of David's ex. He is going to get married to me, but he still loves his ex. <laughs> what an awful person! I'm so sorry to hear that, Rachel. Have you asked David about that? No, Tim, I don't want to tell him. I hate him. Calm down, Rachel. You have to face it. I think you should ask David about the relationship between him and his ex. You should give him a chance to explain and solve his mistake. If he doesn't admit his fault, you should break up with him. What should I do now, Tim? My wedding is still going on, but I'm not ready for it. I'm not sure. You have to calm down and make your own decision. Okay, thank you, Tim. Let me be alone for a while. Everything will be okay, Rachel. David, do you take Rachel to be your wife, to live together and love her forever? 
Yes, I agree. So, Rachel, do you take David to be your husband, to live together, and to love him forever? No, I don't. I'm not ready. He has lied to me. What is the matter with her? Why did she do this? Rachel, what did I do? Rachel! Dialogue 2. Romantic Love Story. Wow, Ashley. You look so beautiful and shining. Thank you, Jessie. I'm so glad you come to my wedding. Come on, Ashley. You are my best friend. Your wedding dress is so great. I wish I could wear it one time. How do you feel now, Ashley? Are you ready to get married and live with James for the rest of your life? Of course, Jessie. I love James so much. He really loves me and cares a lot. Can you tell me more about him? I really want to know. Have you two ever argued? Never. He is always kind to me. He also buys me many gifts. They mean a lot to me. Could you tell me about the day when he proposed to you? I'm so curious. Mmm, let me remember. It was a beautiful night. James and I were having dinner in a luxury restaurant. James went out for a while and he backed with a bunch of roses. He kneeled and said to me, Will you marry me? And it was so romantic. What did you say then? I was so surprised and happy too. I said, Yes, I love you, James, immediately. Everyone around clapped and congratulated us. Then he put a ring on my finger. It was the best memory thing in my life. We hugged and kissed under the lights. So beautiful, Ashley. You are so lucky, my friend. Do you want to know about our honeymoon trip next week? That is very interesting. Of course, Ashley. We are going to the Caribbean for a week. We'll enjoy the trip together and eat all the delicious food there. I love beaches, and so does James. We will lie on the beach side in the morning, swim or surf in the afternoon, and discover local culture at night. That will be an amazing trip. My dream trip, too. Now you should be ready for the ceremony. I hope you and James are always happy and love each other. Thank you so much, my friend. I love you. Dialogue 3. Wedding Wishes Thank you for coming with us. We are so happy and lucky because we have good friends like you. Yes, we are so grateful. Come on, Tom and Sam. We've been friends since childhood. Everyone, let's congratulate and send best wishes to our couple. I'm first. Wishing you a healthy family and have beautiful children. Thank you, Lucas. We also want to have a baby soon. Thanks for your wish. Let me continue. Wishing you two joy, love, and happiness on your wedding day, and as you begin your new life together. Hope the love and happiness you feel today will shine through the years. I will give you a short wish. Stay happy forever. Tom and Sam, wish you all the health and happiness. Okay, everyone. We know the big love from you. Hope all you have good health and live happy as well. Now, let's continue enjoying the delicious food here. Cheers! Cheers. Dialogue 4. The Happiness of a Couple
Look, Phil. Everyone is dancing and drinking. They look so vibrant and bustling. Yeah, honey. Our party tonight is awesome. I'm quite tired now, but don't worry. I'm still good. Phil, you should sit here to take a short rest. You seem too drunk. Okay, Tracy. How do you feel now, babe? Today was a long day. Everything is like a dream. Today is the most important day of my life, baby. I have waited for our wedding for a long time. Finally, it comes like a dream. Me too. After overcoming everything, I marry you. You're the most meaningful gift I ever have. I love you, Tracy. Phil, do you know that the first time we met, I really hated you? I don't know. You've never told me that. Do you remember that day? I was drinking coffee, then you walked nearby and dropped your cake on me. It was my most favorite shirt. You did not even apologize to me. I thought you were so bad and just wanted to yell at you. Oh, I remember it. I was too busy at that time. Have you still hated me until now? No, Phil. I'm your wife now. How can I hate you? I will love you forever, my love. I have to go there. John is calling me. Love you. Okay, I'll drink a cup of tea. Learn English with Topic When Guests Come to Visit Friends are an important part of life. In addition to meeting friends outside, sometimes friends will visit our house. Let's see what the characters have prepared to entertain their friends. Situation 1. I'm so glad you visit my house. I'm coming! Good afternoon, Maria. How is it going? Emily! Hi! I'm glad you were here. I'm sorry I didn't call you first. It's fine. Come in. Here's Maria's house. See? The house is a simple and neat design. I love it. It looks so cozy. Thank you. Make yourself at home. Would you like to drink something? Orange juice, Emily? Perfect. Thank you. Here is your orange juice. Thank you. And I have a housewarming gift for you. Oh, that's so cute. Thank you. I had a business trip last month, so I missed your housewarming party. I'm sorry. Now you're here. Don't say that. How was the party? I guess it was fun. Yep, my friends came almost full. Will and John also came. They asked about you. It reminds me of our school days. We usually went out on weekends or went to each other's house. Now we can, too. Let's eat together and talk in our free time. I'm glad to hear that. Are you preparing lunch? Yes, have you eaten yet? Shall I cook lunch for us? That sounds great. Let's cook together. What do you want to eat? How about beefsteak and beer? It is your favorite food. And your favorite food is pasta. It's so great to be with you like this. Since graduating from school, we also have less contact. I'm so happy when you visit. When you opened the door and I saw you, I was both happy and confused. Oh, my best friend, I miss you so much. Come on and hug me. <laughs> I think that we should make beefsteak first. You're shy, right? No, I'm not. Where is the beef? Hey, hug me. Hey, where are you going? 
Where are the potatoes? Situation 2. What should we prepare for a house party? The teacher has an emergency today, so we can go home early. Tomorrow is the weekend. Why don't we come to my house? We can have a party at home. Is it a bother with your parents? Don't worry. My parents used to ask about inviting you to visit my house. Let's go. What should we prepare for the house party? We will buy some food and drinks. We need to decorate the party and prepare for the games. Can we karaoke? I can sing until midnight. I like to sing so much. Karaoke is fine, but we can only sing until 6 p.m. If we sing at night, we will bother the neighbors. You're right. So, what do you guys want to eat for the party? Let's eat pizza and sandwiches for the main course. Fruit and ice cream for dessert. Drinks are Coca-Cola, orange juice, and some snacks, okay? Sounds great. Let's sing karaoke until 6 p.m., then we'll play some games. I think we should play Guess the Movie from the description. Interesting! We can't speak. We can only express it with our hands, feet, or whole body. Yes, finally sit down together and play the truth-telling game. It will be fun. So, Richard and I will go to the supermarket to buy food and drinks. Anna and I will be at home decorating the party and preparing the games. Shall we invite some friends next door? They're friendly and polite. The more the merrier. Let's invite them to your house and join us. Let's party. Situation 3. Long time no see. David, right? Long time no see. You're Brian? Where have you been? Come in! Since you moved to Los Angeles, I've almost lost touch with you. Uh, I lost all contact. Luckily, I still have the letter you wrote to me. The letter has your address. I went there and met your parents. Then they gave me this address. Met your parents. Seeing them healthy makes me so happy. How are your parents? They're fine. Your house is so cool. I moved out to live with my wife. We've been married for one year. She's three months pregnant. Today she is visiting her sister's house. <gasps> Congratulations! I have a business trip here. I found you right after meeting my partner. How about you? Are you married or single? I am single. I'm only interested in work. How about your job? I got a promotion last month. Hey, don't tell me you still have a crush on Angela. I don't. No, who is she? What do you say? Is she still single? I just went to her wedding last month. <gasps> Are you kidding me? Really? I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's so fun. <sighs> How about your job? My boss trusts me and he gave me a new project. I'm glad to hear that. It's been almost seven years. When we were at school, we're always together. I remember when we went to play video games together, played soccer together, ate together, went to the library, everything. Have you had lunch yet? Let's go out to eat. I have many things to tell you. Okay, let's go, my friend. I know a restaurant near Angela's house. Really? No! <laughs> You're so cute. 
Situation 4. This is my friend's house. Excuse me, this is Walter's house, isn't it? Yeah, but... Ethan, it's you! Walter, it's good to see you. My wife Linda and I have a vacation here. So glad to see you. I saw your message, but I didn't know you'd come today. Now come in. I bought you a present from our city. Thank you. This is my wife, Bella. This is Ethan and his wife, Linda. Nice to meet you. Would you like to drink coconut? Thank you, please. And thank you for inviting us to visit your house. Your house is so beautiful. Hawaiian style. Thank you. I like this style. Walter, how are you doing? You see, I feel great. I like this place. Waves, wind, and sunshine. What did you visit in Hawaii? Actually, we just went to the beach, and then we stopped by your house. Let me be your tour guide. It's so great, my pleasure. I'll show you how beautiful this place is. Look at your eyes. It says how much you love this place. I'm glad you're happy. And I'm glad to see you again. Let's go to Hawaii when you have free time, okay? I will. Tomorrow, my friend is having a beach party. Will you come? Beach party? Sounds fun. You can also go there. Come with us. Yes, that will be fun. Okay, we will be there. Walter didn't take over his father's company and come here. Why, honey? In the past, I saw Walter as a rich boy who didn't smile. And now, I see him as a guy who doesn't have much money, but he has everything and is so happy. You're right. Look at his smile. His wife is also very kind. He followed his heart, and now he is free, living each day to the fullest. How about you? I'm happy too. Everyone has a different way of life. Meeting old friends again, seeing them live happily, makes me happy too. In the post office. Nowadays, we always prefer telephone calls, emails, and text messages. However, sometimes you still need to send a gift to someone, a written note, or a postcard. Let's watch this video to learn about some conversations in the post office. Situation 1. Buying Postcard Mary, what are you doing? Nothing, Mommy. What's up? Grandpa just sent you a box of presents. Come here. Ooh, I really want to come to London to visit him. I miss him so much. You can send him a postcard. When I lived in Florida alone, Grandpa always wanted me to send him something every week. Really? I haven't sent a postcard before. I will give it a shot. Where can I buy it, Mommy? In the post office. It's the nearest. Okay, I will go there this afternoon. Hi, I want to buy a postcard, please. Hello, which kind of postcard do you want? I don't know. This is the first time I buy a postcard. You give me some suggestions, please? Let's see. Who do you send postcards to? I'm sending it to my grandfather. He is living in London. So maybe he misses New York so much. You should buy the postcard with the picture of New York. There are some New York postcards. You can choose one by yourself. Great! He told me that he has just come to New York three times. 
when my mom got married, when I was born, and last summer. How many postcards do you want? I just want to buy one, but there are many beautiful postcards, so I will have three. Okay, do you want to buy a stamp as well? No thanks, I will buy it later. What time does your post office open? From 8.30 to 5 p.m. You can bring your postcard here in that time. Okay, I see. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Situation 2. Sending a package to California. Welcome. What can I do for you today? Hello. I would like to send this package to my brother. Where is it going? To California. My brother is working there. How would you like to send it? Express delivery or standard delivery? What are the differences? It depends on how quickly the package has arrived. How long does express delivery take? About three days, and standard delivery takes about one week. Absolutely, express service costs a little higher. Okay, it's not a big problem. I choose express delivery. What does the package contain? Are they value goods or fragile goods? Not at all. There are some clothes and a watch. I bought them for him as a surprise gift. The watch is a fragile good. Do you want me to pack it with bubble wrap? That will be better. Please help me wrap them. Okay, please fill in these shipping details while I am packing them for you, including name, phone number, address, and the contents of the box. Okay, no problem. I'm done. Let me see. Oh, you forgot to write the recipient's address. It's the most important field. Please fill in all the required information. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me complete it. Okay, this is your wrapped package. Let me weigh it for you, then I will calculate the cost for you. It's 1.5 kilograms. How much is it? It's $13.95. Okay, here you are. Thank you. Situation 3. Receiving Package Hi, Daddy. How is it going? I'm good, baby. How are you? All good, Daddy. I just finished my final exam. I got A-plus for math. Oh, great. You are a star. I will buy a gift for you. What do you want, sweetie? I'm not sure. A scarf is okay? Sure. I will buy you a pink one. Do you like tea? My hotel is close to a Whitup store. No, Daddy. When will you come back home? I'm not sure, baby. Maybe I have to be here for two months more. Aw, I miss you so much, Daddy. I miss you too. Oh, it's working time. I have to be back to work. The package may arrive in one week. They will send you an SMS about a parcel arrive notice. Okay, thank you, Dad. Love you. Good morning. How can I help you? I got a message about a parcel that arrived notice two days ago. Can I get it here? Sure. Can I have your name, please? My name is Emma. Emma Lee. Okay. Wait for me a couple of minutes. I will check it now. Okay. That is a parcel from Birmingham. Oh, it's here. You have a parcel of 1.5 kilograms from Mr. John. Let me take it for you. Here you are. Thank you. How much is the shipping cost? The cost is prepaid by Mr. John. You just need to sign your name here. Where is it? Here. Please sign your name here, and then write your full name below. Okay. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Bye.
Situation 4. Receiving money. Good morning. How can I help you? I come to receive my salary. Did you get the arrival notice and SMS? Yes, I received it last week, but now I just have time to collect it. Okay, we have the ticket dispenser machine over there. You can get your number and wait till your turn. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Number 92. Hello. Hi, please give me your ticket. Thank you. How can I help you? I am coming to receive my money. I received the notice last week, but now I just have time. Can I receive it here? Absolutely. Can I have your money transfer control number, please? Um, let me check. My partner just sent me a picture. Which is the money transfer control number? It is on the top of the receipt. Can I have a look, please? Here you are. This one. Oh, I see. Thank you. What is your name, please? My name is Anna. Anna Turner. Can I have your ID, please? 123-877-153. You have $1,200 from Sunshine Company in Texas. I will give you a form, then please fill it in with all the required information. Your name must be written in capital letters. Okay, I see. Here you are. Okay, this is $1,200. You should double check it before you leave, then give me your signature here, and your full name as well. Okay, that's fine. Do you need me to help you with anything else? No, thanks so much. It's done, isn't it? Yes, have a nice day. Thank you, you too. Health Examination Nowadays, more and more children are getting fatter. Let's watch this video to know why and what parents should do for their children to reduce this. What are you doing? I am playing video games. Look at you. Look at your belly. What's wrong with my belly, Mom? I think it looks great. How about stopping playing video games for a while and going for a walk with me? I think you need more exercise, honey. But playing is funnier. And exercising is so tiring and boring. I don't want to go out, Mommy. Playing games is fun, but it doesn't do good for your health. If you sit to play for too long, your eyes will become short-sighted and your body will get fat. But I don't see any of my friends exercising. They are just playing games with me. You should build your own good habit, honey. You should not follow other people all the time. But can I go for a walk with you tomorrow? This game is getting more and more interesting. I don't want to miss this. This is the first warning, Tom. Don't make Mommy mad. Hi, baby. How was your day? I'm driving home, sweet. Today was great. How about you? I'm okay, baby, but I'm worried about Tom. He has gained a lot of weight recently and kept playing games without moving since he went home. Yeah, I also realized that. Tomorrow is Saturday. I think you should take him to Dr. Henry. He is the best doctor in town. 
I will contact him. 1 p.m. sounds great. Okay, I will book tomorrow afternoon. Okay, baby. Drive carefully. See you home. Love you. Love you too. Tom, honey, have you finished your games? Just one more game, Mom, please. I will approve if you agree to see the doctor with me tomorrow. But I hate hospital, Mom. Or do you want to say goodbye to your video games? Fine. So after meeting with the doctor, can I continue to play games? Yes, but because tomorrow you have to see the doctor, you cannot eat anything from tomorrow morning. No way, Mom! Yes, or I will throw away your games. Tom, is that you? What are you doing in the kitchen at night? No, it's not Tom, Mom. I know it's your voice, Tom. Why are you here? Nothing. I'm finding my toys. There are no toys in the kitchen, Tom. You know that. Why are you telling lies to me? Sorry, Mom. I'm just hungry. You said I cannot eat anything tomorrow, so I'm trying to store some food in my room. Don't be mad at me, Mom. Oh, honey, how can I be mad at you? I just feel worried about your health. We will see the doctor tomorrow. He will give you some aspirins. And if you follow the doctor's advice strictly, I will let you play video games and buy you more toys, okay? It sounds great, Mom, but I'm still hungry now. There are some kiwis and apples in the fridge. You can eat them. But I want spaghetti, Mom. It's too late for that. You cannot eat spaghetti now. It will ruin your teeth and make you fatter. You know you're not in shape, Tom. What about cookies, Mom? Cookies are not acceptable as well. You can only eat fruit, honey, or you must go back to your room with nothing. Fine. I will take some apples and grapes. Just take a few, Tom. I don't think filling up your belly at the moment is good. There are oranges as well. Let me make some orange juice for you. Thanks, Mom. I love you. Mommy loves you too. You're a good kid, Tom. Hello, Dr. Henry. My name is Lena. And this is my son, Tom. We have booked a monthly check for him with you. Hello, Mrs. Lena and Tom. How is your day, Tom? I feel not good because my mother stopped me from playing video games and eating to take me there. Don't worry. It won't take too much of your time. You just need to answer some easy questions and do some tests. And after that, you can go home and continue to play your games and eat whatever you like. That sounds good to me. All right. The first question. How frequently do you exercise? I don't remember exactly. Maybe one month ago? Yesterday, my mom asked me to go for a walk with her, but I was busy playing games at that time. All right. What do you usually have in your meal? My mother always wants me to eat more vegetables and fruit, 
but I just like fried chicken, pizza, and hamburgers because they are so yummy. I eat them four times a week. I understand. The last question here. How do you feel about your body recently? I mean, does something unusual happen? I'm not sure about that. I feel hungry all the time. I also easily get frustrated, angry, and upset, especially when someone jokes about my appearance. I also easily feel tired and don't have enough energy to join outside activities with my friends at school. I think I can see your problem. I will have a talk with your mother later. For you, I have some suggestions. I think you should join more activities with your friends or your mom. For example, walking, running, cycling. Those activities are not only relaxing and interesting, but also help boost your emotions and your health. And I think your mother is right. Eating vegetables is much better for you than eating chicken, pizza, and hamburgers. I once tried to eat broccoli. They are disgusting to me. Let's have another try, boy. This time you should try to make grilled broccoli. I believe you will like its taste. I don't think so. Now, thank you, Tom. I need to take out a little bit of your blood for a checkup and calculate your blood pressure. Could you follow your mom to the room at the end of the corridor? I'm scared. I don't want that, doctor. Don't be scared, boy. By the way, we have chocolates for you in that room. You can have one if you follow my instructions. Is that real? Yay! Okay, let's go, Tom. Tutoring the Child When kids struggle with a certain topic or subject in school, they'll often need your help. Tutoring kids is very rewarding, but it can be a little tough at the beginning. Situation 1. Calling 911. Hello, it's 911 Emergencies. What can I help you with? Yeah, hello? I need some help. Okay, what's the matter? With my math. With your math? Yes, I need some help with my math. I have to do it. Could you help me? All right. Where do you live? No, I need you to help with my math. Yes, I know. But can you tell me where you are living? But can you help me with the phone? Sure, but I would like to send someone to come to help you. Uh, okay. What kind of math do you need? I have takeaways. Oh, you have to do takeaways? Yes, that's right. Okay, what is the math? Can you tell me what the problem is? All right, here is one. Five take away five. Okay, five take away five. So, how much do you think that is? Um, I think ten. <gasps> Tommy, what are you doing? I'm just calling for help. The police are helping me with my math. Oh, it's the mother. <laughs> what did I tell you about giving a phone call? To call somebody. You said I can call someone if I need help, didn't you? I didn't mean the police. Okay, hang up the phone, Tommy. Okay, Mommy. I'm here. I will help you.
Situation 2. Helping your kid to do history exercises. Mommy, I don't want to do this exercise. What are you saying? It's hard, Mommy. I don't want to do it anymore. Come on, Jack. You have to complete your homework. I don't want to. Okay, do you need my help? Which one is the hardest? The history exercise. All right, I will help you when I'm done. While waiting for me, you can complete your art task. Okay, Mommy. I like drawing. Hey, Jack, did you finish your picture? Yes, Mommy. Look at it. Oh, wow. It's so awesome. You are a star. How many scores do you think it is? Score A, definitely. Great. I love it. Now, do you remember what we should do now? Yes, do the history exercise. Okay, which lesson are you learning today? Lesson 4, Maya. Maya? Right, I am learning about the introduction to the ancient Maya. Okay, where is it located, baby? I don't know. Hmm, you can read the first paragraph. Where is it? Read the paragraph first. Did you find it out? Uh, yes. It's located in Mexico and part of Central America. Good job! You should read all the paragraphs and find out the answers. Reading is very important. Can you try the next question, Jack? Yes. The answer is in the third paragraph, isn't it? Can you show me? This line. Perfect. You are able to do it. But, Mommy, what is the lost world? When you complete all the questions, I will show you a video about the lost world of Maya. Really? Absolutely. Promise me? Yeah. But now you have to complete your exercise. If the questions are hard, let me know. Then I will help you to solve them. Situation 3. Helping your kid to focus on learning. Tommy, turn off the TV now. It's too late for your learning time. No, I don't want to. Tommy, I don't want to do my homework. The cartoon is more interesting. All right. Let me know why you don't want to do your homework. You know it's your responsibility, right? Yes, but I like watching TV. Listen to me, Tommy. You didn't do it then. You cannot pass the exam. But... You can watch TV after completing them. Daddy, I... I will help you, all right? Okay. Today, the teacher gives me too much homework. I don't know what I should do first. Which subjects do you have tomorrow? I have math, physical education, art, and science. Do you have homework for all of them? No, I just have exercises for math and science. Is Superman real, Daddy? I just watched a flying Superman on TV. Tommy, we should begin with math first. Then I will tell you a story about Superman later. All right, I have to do plus. Do you understand what plus is? Yes, I do. Perfect. Now you should start with exercise number one. If you can complete three exercises in 30 minutes, I will let you go to the park this weekend. Really, Daddy? Yes, I promise. As easy as pie. Okay, then when you finish, let me know. Then I will help you with your science exercises. I will stand behind to observe you. Mm. 
Situation 4. Discussing tutoring your child. What day is today, honey? It's Thursday. What's up, babe? Oh my god, I thought it was Friday. Why is Anne still watching TV? She must study right now, doesn't she? Yes, she is going to start at 8.30 p.m. I reminded her. Okay, but Anne is 12 already. Her learning program is going to be harder day by day, especially math. I was wondering if I can help her with her homework anymore or not. Come on, Mark. You are a master in the university. What are you saying? You know, I'm a master in social science only. Teaching a kid is different from teaching university students, though. We must have a suited method with a kid. So what should we do? You're always home with her. I think you should take the time to help her with her homework. You don't know how to teach her, but I ever had never done it before. So why did you tell me to do it? I'm afraid that even my knowledge is not correct. Emma, knowledge is just one part. Her behavior and attitudes are quite important as well. I think we need to figure out which way is the best. Do you think we should go meet her teacher? For what? Come on, Emma. One teacher will have to take responsibility for three to five classes. They don't have time to focus on only Anne. So what should we do? You need to find out one solution, not only deny all of my opinions. What do you think about joining some workshops or classes to learn effective ways? Does it work? Maybe. I'm not sure. But we can try. I will look it up on the internet. My colleague just sent me some. I will forward you. Maybe we should take part together? Perfect. I'm having a look now. Saturday or Sunday, better for you? Sunday, I think. What's the weather like? Watch to find out ways you can talk about the weather. Dialogue 1. What's the weather like today? Hey, Tom. Are you coming to work today? Of course. Why? Are you calling in sick, Mike? No, I'm not sick. It is just raining really hard where I am now. The road is already flooded. Really? It is not raining here, though. If it is already flooded there, you should probably stay home. It is really dangerous to travel in such weather. Mm, let me wait and see. By the way, what is the weather like at your place? It is gloomy and pretty windy, but I do not think it will rain. The clouds do not seem that heavy to me. I see. Can you go to work first and tell me what the weather is like at the office? Sure thing. If it rains too hard there, just stay home. You can work online, you know. I know, but there is a really important meeting at the office today. I do not want to miss it. Anyway, thank you very much. You're welcome, Mike. I will let you know once I get there. Awesome. I'll be waiting for your call. Dialogue 2. Beautiful day, huh? Wow! Today is such a beautiful day, don't you think so, Emma? Yes, indeed, Mel. The last few days have been so hot, but today is nice. I know, right? I could not even go outside yesterday. Today the sky is so clear and the wind is clear. Cool. Oh, I especially love the summer breeze. It feels so good to be outside. I have an idea. Why don't we go on a picnic today? A picnic? Are you sure? Yes, why not? We can invite Brad and his sister Layla as well. That sounds good, but do we have a car? I can borrow my dad's. I am sure he doesn't mind. Have you got your driver's license yet? Yes, I actually have. I passed the test last month. And you did not tell me? 
That is amazing! Congratulations! Thank you. It is no big deal, really. It was not that hard. <laughs> right. Should I call Brad now, or do you want to do it? You do it. I will call my dad to ask for the car. Okay. Hey, Brad, do you have any plans for today? No, not yet. Why? Well, Mel and I were just thinking about going on a picnic, since it is so nice outside. Care to join us? Of course. Let's go. Can I bring my sister as well? <laughs> Funny that you asked. I was about to tell you to invite her, too. <laughs> All right. See you guys in about 15 minutes. Cool. See ya. Dialogue 3. What's the temperature? Hey, Riley! Come inside! Oh my god. You have no idea how cold it is outside right now, Ron. I am freezing. You look really cold. Take a seat. Let me turn on the heater. Thank you. Are you feeling any better? Yes, a little bit. Tell me, how was the weather out there? Oh my god, there is literally a snowstorm outside right now. I almost got blown away by a strong wind. That is scary. I'm glad you made it here in time. Yes, me too. What is the temperature, though? I'm not sure, but definitely below zero Celsius degrees. You should stay here for the night, then. I do not think it is safe for you to travel all the way home right now. Will that be fine? Of course. Don't worry about it. I have a spare bedroom that you can use. Thank you so much. I don't think I can go outside now, either. The snow is getting really heavy. I can see that. Well, let me go get you some warm clothes and a pair of fuzzy socks. I'll be right back. All right. Here you go. If you need anything else, tell me, okay? Sure, thank you again. No problem. By the way, do you want a cup of hot chocolate to warm up? That would be really nice in this weather, thanks. A cup of hot chocolate coming right up. Dialogue 4, Lightning and Thunder Is it really fine for me to stay here for a while, Tyler? Definitely. My entire family is away for work, and I have the whole house for myself at the moment. Don't worry, Nate. Okay, thank you. I just saw on the weather forecast that there would be a huge storm hitting our town, and I just want to be safe. Oh, I heard about it on the news this morning, too. You really should stay inside at times like this. I agree. I will be heading home as soon as the storm dies down a little bit, though. No worries. You can even sleep here tonight if you want. I don't mind. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Do you want some snacks? Or a drink? What can I get you? Can I just get a glass of water, please? Of course. Give me a minute. Here is your water, Nate. Thanks. So, did it say how strong the storm was going to be in the forecast? Oh, pretty strong. I think there would be lightning and thunder as well. Oh no, that is dangerous. You should definitely stay here then. Let me go get you a spare mattress. No need, Ty. I can sleep right here on this sofa if needed. Are you sure? Of course. Don't worry about me. You've already helped enough. Well, uh, just let me know if I can help with anything else. Christmas Story Christmas is an annual traditional festival. Normally, we will gather with our family after one busy year. Check out the video below to follow A Christmas Day of Chris.
Wake up, wake up, Chris. Mommy, I don't have school today. May I sleep a bit more? Yesterday I told you, right? I don't remember, Mommy. Well, today we will decorate the Christmas tree and make some food for Christmas Day next week. Get up and prepare everything together. Oh yes, I will be a nice kid today, and then Santa will bring my dreaming presents. Absolutely, get up and wash my face and brush my teeth. Great, good boy. Don't forget to do your bed as well. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Chris, slow down. Mommy, Daddy, I love Christmas so much. Do you want to decorate the Christmas tree with me? Absolutely, yes. What are you doing, Daddy? I am trimming it to make it more beautiful. First of all, we will hang the Christmas ornaments. I like candy canes most. Could I hang it around the tree? Yes. Here you are. And the last thing, what is it, Chris? The star. Excellent. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How about you? All good. Have you prepared everything for Christmas? Of course I did. I'm a bit sad because you cannot come to my house on Christmas Day. I'm so sorry. I promise I will be there next year. Is Chris there? I miss him so much. Chris, Grandma is calling. She wants to talk with you. Grandma. Oh, I miss her. Hi, Grandma. Hello, my little Chris. You look so cute today. Yes, Grandma. My mom bought this hat for me last month. I am one of the first people to have a Christmas hat in my class. Really? Do you have a Christmas tree? Yes, I will show you. Look, Grandma. It's so big. Wow, you decorated it so beautifully, my little boy. Do you have one, Grandma? If not, you can come to my house. I also have candy canes. My mom did them so well. Really, I have one here. It's behind me. Look. Wow, it's so pretty. I hung my sock on our brick chimney. Wow! Santa will see your sock first and give you the biggest present. You think so, right? Yeah. On Christmas night, you should go to sleep soon. If you don't fall asleep, Santa won't come to your house. Really? I remember, Grandma. I hope Santa comes soon. And I hope we get to him laugh and say, "Ho ho ho!" All right, let keep it in your mind. Maybe it will come true one day. Chris, I need to prepare some dishes for Christmas. I will call you later. Okay, talk later, Grandma. I will send you our picture. Okay, bye, sweetie. Bye, Grandma. Which dishes do we prepare, Mommy? What do you want to eat on Christmas Day, my little boy? We haven't had ginger cookies yet. Can I help you to make them? Yes, I prepared flour there. We have to wait for a few minutes. I am 
I'm not able to sleep. But if not, Santa will skip my house. Ah, uh, my mom told me that I can count the sheep when I want to fall asleep. One, two, three, four. Oh my god, I still can't. What's wrong with me? Oh, wait a minute. I hear some noise in the living room. Let's go, Teddy. We will go to the living room. I'm so scared. Oh my, I was almost stuck in the chimney. Wow, that's Santa. He came. Oops. Hello, little one. Hi, Santa. Nice to meet you. I'm so happy and surprised. Am I dreaming? No, I'm Santa. Ho, ho, ho. Why don't you go to bed at this time? I tried, but I'm so excited about tomorrow morning, so... Hmm, I saw you on my list. You are a good boy. It means that I still have gifted this year, right? That's right. Yahoo! This one is yours. Thank you so much. Remember, do not open it before tomorrow morning. Yes, of course. Don't tell anyone that you met me. It will be our secret. Yes, I promise. I will keep it just between you and me. Good boy. Oops, I have a lot of presents. Smart boy, come here. Can you help me to put these presents in my sack? Can I? Yes, I can. Of course. Do you want to try some ginger cookies? I helped mom to do it this morning. Oh, you are a good boy. Let's go eat the cookies you made. Oops, I can be late. Quickly, reindeer. We have many presents to give to good kids. Bye, Santa. Will you come to my house next year? It's up to you. You should listen to your parents and be nice. I will see you next year. Ho, ho, ho. Chris? Chris? Are you dreaming? Mommy, did Santa leave? Santa? You must be dreaming about him. Dreaming? I thought I met him. Really? What does he look like? He has rosy cheeks and a white as snow beard. That's him. You are so lucky. Did he talk anything to you? Yes, but I need to keep it in secret. I promised him. <laughs> Good boy. He also gave me a big present I have never seen ever because I'm a good boy. Do you want to check your socks and the Christmas tree in the living room? Yeah, Mommy, Daddy, look. Santa came here. I told you. Wow. Unwrap it. Is it what you want? Daddy, the new automatic train. I wrote my wishes in the sock and it came true. Wow. Congratulations. What do you have, Daddy? A small paper Christmas tree. Is that from you? Yes, 
Yes, it is. Teacher Jimmy taught me to make it. It's so beautiful, sweetie. I really love it. I have also prepared a card for you, but you should read it privately. I would be so shy if you read it out loud. I see. You are so sweet, my boy. Come on, we should take a photo to keep our memories today. I promise to send Grandma one. Say cheese. 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 And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. I love you so much. Let's go to have breakfast together. I baked some cakes for you. I will take some milk. What time is it? What time is it? Conventional everyday questions or communication when talking about the exact time. See the following situations to learn how to ask questions and answers about time. Situation 1 Jackson, it's exactly 4.45 p.m. Can you be quicker, please? Okay, I've almost finished. You are as slow as a snail. I'm coming. Hurry up. We can be stuck in traffic jams if we are only five minutes late. I know. Take my car keys, Alice. Here it is. Oh my god, there are so many cars. It's a long queue. What time is it, Alice? It's almost ten past five. It's too early. The party is going to start at six o'clock. We can go there in 45 minutes. If there's no heavy traffic like this. Don't worry, I'll go a shorter way. It's up to you, as long as we arrive there in time. Of course. I don't think we can be at the restaurant at exactly 6 p.m. Why? Now it's almost half past five, and it takes us about one hour to go there with the traffic problem, Jackson. No way! I just glanced at my watch a few minutes ago. It cannot be 5.30. So, what time is it? Just almost 5.20. Oh, turns out my watch is fast. 30 minutes later. Alice, do you see where it is? Well, eventually we will get there. I told you we would be at the party in time. Now it's exactly six o'clock. I know. It's exactly eight to six. Okay, let's go in. Hi, Sally. Are you on the road? Uh, how much longer does it take for you to be in the office? Wait, wait, on the road to where? Oh, no. Do you really ask that question? Why not? It's too early now. Too early? You don't know what time it is, do you? What time is it? A quarter to seven. What? Exactly a quarter to seven. Oh my gosh! I'll arrive there now! Hurry up, you may be late. Taxi! Taxi! Uh, get in, please. Where would you like to go? I need to go to the Mapbox company, please. Lady, bang the door, please. Oh, sorry. No problem. How long does it take to get there? If no jam, we can get there around a quarter past seven o'clock. Excuse me, but could you drive a bit faster? I'm in a hurry. I can't break the traffic rules. Just a bit faster. I need to be present at the office by 7.15. Don't worry. Now it's just 5 to 7. It usually takes 15 minutes to get there. Thank you. I'll go the shorter way. The road ahead often has heavy traffic. Thank you so much. 
Have you got the time here? I left both my phone and watch at home. Five past seven, lady. Will we get there in time? I will try. Many thanks. My presentation to the board starts at half past seven, so I'm a little bit in a hurry. Is it nearly 7.15? No, don't worry. We're nearly there. About eight minutes. Here we are. Now it's exactly seven past seven. You won't be late. Thank you. How much is it? Your total is, uh, three fifty. Uh, that's fine. Keep the change. Thank you so much. It was nothing. Hi, John. Has the meeting started? Not yet. Oh, why? Could you tell me the time, please? Twenty-three past seven. If so, you must have been in the meeting room. Why are you here? You're so lucky, Sally. The meeting is delayed. It starts at eight o'clock. <sighs> oh, how lucky I am. I did set an alarm at about a quarter to six, but it didn't go off. So that's why I was late. <laughs> okay. Let's prepare you for your presentation, Sally. Okay, thanks for calling, John. Hey, my girl, I'm here. Oh, hi, Emma. Long time no see. Oh, my God. Look who it is. How have you been? It's going well. What about you? What have you been up to? Still journalism? Everything is great. No, I'm a copywriter now. Oh, wow. That's a freelance job, right? That's right. So my time is very flexible. In contrast to me, every morning I have to get up at 5.45 or even half past 5 o'clock. <laughs> you are not an early bird. Yes. I also want to have the same job as you. But I get used to getting up early in the morning. Really? What time do you often get up? About 5 a.m. Oh my gosh! Why do you wake up so early like that? Uh, my hobby is running in the early morning. I prefer doing activities in the daytime. Exactly when do you run? Twenty past five, or sometimes half past five. Wow, you must have taken a lot of exercises. How long do you run? A half hour, or an hour? Both are not right. One and a half hours. Um, uh, you also go to the gym, right? Yes, but in the evening, around half past six or seven o'clock. After work? Yes. How often do you go to the gym per week? Every day? No, sometimes. Three days per week? What time do you leave the office? Five o'clock in the afternoon. So your working time starts at 8 a.m. as usual? Um... No, actually, my work often starts at 9 o'clock. But if I have a meeting, I'll be earlier, maybe 15 minutes earlier than usual. A quarter to 9? Correct. Ah, Emma, do you know what time it is? 25 to 10. What's wrong? Do you have to go somewhere? No, just asking. Emma, how can you get up so early like that? I've tried many times but failed. I don't know. The alarm goes off and I wake up. How long do you spend sleeping? Mm, seven hours, six hours, and a half. Probably you turn off the lights by eleven o'clock. Around that time, my sleeping time is not fixed. You usually go to bed late, don't you, Anna? That's right. Even there were some days I slept at the crack of dawn because of completing work. Oh, poor you. Emma, do you want to go shopping now? What time is it? Yes, whatever. It's a couple of minutes past eleven. A little bit late for going shopping, but it's fine. Let's go. Tom, Tom, go quickly to gate seven. I'm sorry for being late. What is the time, Tom? 
It's ten past eight a.m., sir. Run, quickly, the departure time is half past eight. Wait, Mr. Peter, let me tell you. What's more important? We must go quickly to the gate now. Our first flight is delayed. The new departure time is 9.30. Really? Are you sure? I did hear the announcement a half hour ago. Are you sure the delayed flight is ours? 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an announcement that flight NZ245 has been delayed. Your new departure time is half past nine. Thank you. You see? Okay, so lucky. By the way, tell me the schedule during my business trip. Here you are. You'll first have a meeting with the director of Mapbox, Mr. Johnson, this afternoon. What time does the meeting start? A quarter past one. How long does it take place? One hour, according to the plan. And then, you'll go to Oriole Restaurant to negotiate one more time the latest transaction with Mrs. Emily. Specific time? At seven o'clock. Mrs. Emily likes people who are ahead of time, so I suggest we should go there at 6.50. That's fine. What about meeting with a board of directors of the Chicago branch? The meeting will be delayed until the next day due to Mr. Alex's absence. Okay, what time is the meeting going to happen? Early morning, exactly at 7.30, sir. It seems to be an all-day meeting, right? Definitely, sir. Mr. Peter, an old friend just contacted and wants to have a private conversation with you tonight. Who? Mr. Adams, sir. Great! Have me arrange that meeting. Um, around 8.30 or 9 p.m. after Mrs. Emily's meeting. Yes, I'll do it. Tom, have you got the time? A couple of minutes past nine, sir. It's time to get on the plane. Let's go. Yes, sir. Lily, have you almost finished the report I assigned to you? Almost done. If you find it difficult anywhere, just ask me. Yes, thank you. I'm hesitating about calculating the statistic here. Let me have a look. With this kind of statistic, you should use the method I told you about yesterday. Oh, I got it, thank you. Oh my god. What happened, Lily? Linda, look outside. Oh my, it's getting dark. I think it's just a quarter past five or five-thirty at least. Lily, do you know what time it is? Wait for me. I guess it's six o'clock. You're wrong. It is exactly six-fifty. Pardon me? Yes, you didn't hear wrong. Nearly seven p.m.? Of course. Working so hard that we don't know the time. It was not until I lifted my head that both of us knew that it was nightfall. We're all bees. <laughs> Busy as a bee. Go home now? I'll finish the rest of the report. It'll be soon. So, I'll wait for you and then we'll go home together. No, you don't need to do that, Linda. It's no problem. I'll wait. Hello, my friend Sophie. Hi, buddy. What's up, girl? Today we have to go back to school. Um, exactly. I'll pick you up. Let me do that. Whatever. What time? What time does the first cl class begin, Sophie? Half past twelve. So I'll pick you up at ten past twelve. That's fine. Sophie, this evening one of my friends is holding a party, and do you want to go with me, okay? But I don't know anyone. That's no problem. You can make acquaintances with them gradually. Okay, so what time do we go there? 
The party starts at 8 p.m., so I think we can go to my friend's house at a quarter past seven. Do you want to buy some new clothes or dresses for the party? Sounds good! If so, we have to go by five o'clock. Really? Because going Shopton often takes us an hour and a half. But our class finishes at 4.45. No problem. I also have lots of things to do af home after school. How long? About 30 or 40 minutes. So let's meet at the park near your house, is that okay? I was just going to say that. Is 5.30 o'clock fine? It's up to you. Okay. Oh, sorry Elsa, I just remembered that I'm going to have a class this evening. What time does it begin and finish? I study for two hours, and the class starts at half past five. So it finishes at 7.30, right? Yes. I'll wait for you at the park near my house. That's fine, but I'm afraid you can be late when you wait for you. That's okay. I'll wait for you at 20 to 8. Okay, thank you, Elsa. I'm hanging up now. Bye. Goodbye. Good morning, Adam. Hi, how are things? So busy recently. Long time no coffee with you. Alright. Uh, Adam, could you tell me the time, please? I left my watch at home. It's a quarter to nine. Sorry? I mean, it's 8.45. Oh. Adam, would you mind reminding me at half past ten? Uh, that's fine. I'll tell you when the... Clock is 10.30. Thank you so much. Because I have to do something at my office around 10 past 11. You mean 11.10 or 10.50? Uh, 11, 10 o'clock. How far is your company? About 10 kilometers. If so, I'm afraid you should leave at almost 10.20, not half past 10. I think so. Do you know what time it is? It's 5 to 10. So, I will leave in 25 minutes. That's right. Decorating the room. Interior decoration is an extremely interesting topic in daily life. Everyone has a passion for decorating their own house. Let's watch the video to see conversations about interior decoration. Situation 1. Decorate a new apartment. Sophia, the new apartment will be available in a month. I think it's time for us to discuss the interior design. Joe, I was going to tell you. These days, I have been looking at many different designs online. Here are some styles I feel interested in. Okay, show me what you've got. So, this is a modern style with kind of white plain walls, a darker color tone for furniture, and a lot of glasses and marble flooring. To be honest, it looks great. I love simplicity. However, we plan to have a baby in the near future, so do you think we should try something a little bit softer? You are right. How about this? Traditional style with a neutral color tone with floral patterns. Looks a bit old-fashioned to me. You like this style, don't you? Um, not really. I just like the cozy feeling. So do I. I prefer something that makes me feel at home. Any other options that are both modern and cozy? Yes, this one. What do you think? It still looks simple and modern, but a lot cozier with a warmer color. Light gray or brownie is trending this year. I like this one, especially the wooden flooring. We can use it for bedrooms. Very affordable. I want to have carpet in the living room. Alright, how about the kitchen? I want material that is easy to clean and waterproof. Right, how about the color? I'm into brown or beige colors like this one. 
Me too. In short, our taste is modern but cozy. Neutral brown beige tone. Then I think wooden furniture will be an excellent match. Sure, I will note it down. We will discuss a detailed design tomorrow, okay? Yes, I will do more research. Situation 2. Decorating the room for a baby girl. Hi Anna, how are you? Hi Kate, I'm great. And you? Come in. Are you back from work just now? I'm good. And yes, I haven't seen you for months. Too busy with the new job. Today, I remember that you will be in labor in over a month, so I tried to leave work early today to visit you. So nice of you. Come and take a sit. Don't mind my messy place. We are redecorating a bedroom for my little one. Oh, really? How is it going? It must be the cutest room in the house. We have just started recently. How is your plan for the baby girl's room? We always like minimalism, you know? So the room style will match with other rooms also. Three walls are light brown, and one wall is white. The floor will be covered with beige carpet and a white fur rug. Nice! That's very modern and cute at the same time. What are there in the room? I can see the crib over there. I try to only put necessary kinds of stuff. There will be a crib, a medium-sized wardrobe for clothes, and a small cabinet for things like diapers or little things for the baby, all in white. Wait, you mentioned one white wall before that, right? Why only one? Good question! <laughs> I intended to put a huge wooden shelf that has the size of the whole wall. What is it for? For children's books and toys, and for decorating purposes also. I think books and toys are very colorful, so they will be stand out on the white wall. Very unique idea! My friends usually spend the wall on cute stickers. I also decorate other walls with cute pictures of animals, but also in a minimalism style. Ah, I forgot to mention a chair. That's all. Have you bought all those furniture? Yes, I have. Not many, though. The only thing that takes time is painting in the big shelf. Sounds like a very lovely room. Remember to send me a photo when you finish the room. Sure, I will. Do you remember me? Meeting each other again after a long separation is an indescribable feeling for each person. Let's watch this video and see what people say to each other after a long time apart. Topic 1. Old Dormitory Friends Jack, do you see that girl looks familiar? Hmm, let me see. Yes, I think I've seen her somewhere before. It looks like Sarah. Do you remember her? Ah, oh, Sarah was in the same college class, right? I think so. Let's come closer and ask her. Hi, are you Sarah? Yes, I'm Sarah. You must be Jack and Kevin. Of course we are. I don't think that you still remember us. Why not? We were classmates in college, and we also lived in the same dorm. You live on the seventh floor, and I live on the ninth floor. Yes, Sarah? Remember the days when we stayed at the university coffee shop for hours, 
working in groups and doing homework together. These days were so memorable. Yes, I really miss these days a lot. So, how have you guys been lately? I am currently a digital marketer at Light Company. I've been working there for one year. I know this company. It is a quite well known group on the internet. And you, Kevin? I am the sales manager at a clothing store. You can come to my store and buy dresses. They are really suitable for you. Yeah, I will surely come when I have free time. Uh, have either of you been married yet? No, we are still single. Hey, Sarah, we are going to come to Jim's restaurant to enjoy beefsteak. Would you like to join us? Really, Kevin? I am the owner of this restaurant. <laughs> wow, you own a big restaurant like this? Congratulations, Sarah. You are so amazing. It is so surprising. So, we will go to your restaurant right now? I'm so sorry, but I have an appointment with my partner now. I can't go with the two of you. But I will give you a discount card from my restaurant. Enjoy your meal in my restaurant. Hope to see you guys soon. I really want to talk to you more. Thank you, Sarah. Bye, and see you again. Topic 2 A Traffic Accident. Andy, how was your today? I got 95 points on the math test. That was the highest score in our class today. How about your presentation in geography class? Did your performance get high appreciation? Yes, Mom. I did it well, too. Good job, my son. I will award you. What do you want now? I want to eat chicken fried in KFC. Will we go there right now? Of course, Andy. We will drive to KFC. Oh no, Mom! You rammed the car in front. What should we do now? I don't know, Andy. You should stay inside and I will get out to talk with him. I think I can negotiate with the car owner. Okay, Mom. Good luck. Are you okay? I'm so sorry about it. I really didn't mean it. I think my car has a pretty big dent. Oh, wait. You are Lily, right? Oh, Mark, long time no see. I'm so sorry about your car. Let me pay for your car repair. Come on, Lily. No problem. Insurance will pay the damage to me. You don't have to pay for anything. Thank you, Mark. You're still as kind as when you were in school. You are welcome. So, where are you going now? I just went to pick up my son in primary school. Now we are going to KFC as an award for my son because he did well at school this week. Do you have a boy? Wow, Lily, I thought you were planning to work as an accountant for two years and then continue to study abroad. Yes, Mark, but I got married to my husband and also my colleagues, so... I can't continue my plan anymore. Congrats, Lily. Are you still an accountant? Of course, Mark. What is your current job? I'm a brand executive in Samsung. I've worked there for two years. You are so cool, Mark. 
It's a giant technology corporation in the world. Are you free now? Would you like to go to KFC with me and my son? We will talk more about our life. Sorry, Lily. I am too busy now. See you another time. I agree, Mark. How about next weekend? Okay, Lily. I will text you about the place later. Bye, Lily. Bye, Mark. Topic three, at the bus stop. Are you Sarah? Yes, I am Sarah. Jenny, right? <laughs> It's me. We haven't met for a long time. I really miss you. Yes. My old neighbor. Actually, I recognized you from earlier, but I dared not say hello because I fear not being the right person. It's okay. We finally recognized each other. So, Sarah, is your family living well in the new home? How are your new neighbors? Thank you for asking about me. My family really love the new place, especially my children. They love playing in the large yard around my house. My husband doesn't need to get up early in the morning because we live near his company. Besides, our new neighbors are as kind as you. They helped me a lot when I first arrived. You are so lucky, Sarah. I'm fairly jealous of you. And you, Jenny? How has your life been recently? As I said, my kids really miss your children. They were best friends, but now they can meet each other in the class. For me and my husband, we live a normal life. Nothing too special happens. Ah, you know what? There is a new family who arrived and lived in your old house. They are quite kind and sociable. Yes, I heard about them. Ah, where will you come? Why don't you drive your car? My husband used the car. He took our children to the circus. I took the bus home to visit my grandparents. How are they, Sarah? They are fine. And how about you, Jenny? Where are you going? I will come to visit my old friend. She had a baby last week. Is it a boy or girl? A boy. He is her first child. She helped me a lot when I had my first child. How long will you stay with your friend? I think I will stay there for a week. My husband will have an important business trip. So I will help him take care of his wife and his son. Hmm. You are so kind, Jenny. Hope your friend and the baby will have good health and always be happy. How about your children? Who will take care of them? I sent them to my grandparents yesterday. They love living with them, so I don't need to worry about them. My husband will also live there with the kids too. Oh, the bus is coming. Let's go in it. Okay, Jenny. Jobs and occupations. Today, Teacher May is going to teach her students about popular occupations. Let's watch this video and see how Teacher May and students talk about careers around us. Good morning, class. Good, Good morning, morning, Teacher, Teacher May. May. How are you today? We are, We are fine. fine. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm late. May I come in? Yes, please. You may go to your place.
Did you do your homework? Yes, we did. Let me check. Who can solve this exercise on the board? Okay, Ben, please. Uh, six plus five equals eleven. Very good, Ben. Sit down, please. Okay, let's start a new lesson now. Open your book, please. Today, we'll learn about jobs and occupations. Each person has a particular job. Firstly, I have a question for you. Who can tell me about your current job? I am a student. I go to school and study new knowledge. Great, Tim. Thank you. Now I'll organize a mini game for you. Please pay attention and listen to the rules of this game. I have some cards here. There is a job on each card. I'll give you these cards and you will talk about the job on your card. Do you understand? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Excuse me, may I go out, please? I want to go to the toilet. Okay, Ben. I'll take your card to the table. Thank you, teacher. Who wants to be the first player? Tim, please. What's your job? I got the doctor card. I know this one. A doctor is a person who examines sick people. My father is a doctor, too. He is a dentist. He takes care of teeth for many people, especially children. He is very busy at work. Thank you, Tim. You clearly understand this occupation. The doctor will treat the illness for you. When we feel sick, we go to the hospital to meet the doctor. Now, the next one is... Okay, Ben, stand up and tell us about your job, please. My job is a teacher. You are also a teacher, Mrs. May. A teacher is a person who teaches students knowledge and living skills. I love this career and I want to be a teacher like you. I am so happy to hear that. I have some advice for you, Ben. To become a teacher, you should study harder and improve your confidence as well. Thanks for your answer, Ben. May I ask you a question, teacher? Yes, please. I want to be a teacher in the future, too. But I don't study well. I feel so sad. Don't worry, Jess. You are still too young. You have a lot of time to make an effort to be a teacher. Never give up. I always believe you, Jess. So, Jess, can you tell us about your card? It's the engineer. Sorry, teacher. I don't know too much about this job. It's okay, Jess. Who can help Jess describe this occupation? Ben, please? Yes, teacher. An engineer will design, build, or maintain engines, machines, roads, and so on. I think they work quite hard, and they are strong. Are there any other opinions? Do you think that almost all engineers are male? Because this occupation requires a lot of strength. It's right, Tim. You are so intelligent. Let me introduce you to my job. Okay, Kevin, what's your job, please? My career is an architect. An architect is a person who designs beautiful houses. All architects have a knack for art. I'm a big fan of architects because they work as real artists. You're right, Kevin, but I want to add some information about this job for you. Not only drawing well, but architects are also very creative. They are able to design luxury houses for wealthy people. Okay, that is also the final card, but I feel you are still excited about this topic. Who wants to talk about your dream career? Tim, please. I love to play soccer with my friend, so I want to become a soccer player. So, what do you do to follow your dream? I think that a soccer player needs to have good health and special skills. Hence, I will do exercise every day and improve my soccer skills regularly. That's a good idea, Tim. I hope you can be a superstar. 
Kevin, what do you want to do when you're an adult? I want to be a scientist. I want to research everything surrounding us and learn more useful knowledge for myself. To do that, I need to study well and read many books. By the way, I also like reading books, too. Very good, Kevin. When I was a child, I wanted to become a scientist like you. Now, class, are there any jobs that you want to explore? Can you describe a waiter, teacher? Of course, Kevin. When you go to a restaurant or cafe, you will be served by some people called waiters. They will ask you for the food or drink you want to have and bring them out for you. As you may know, most of the waiters are young people. They do it to earn a little money to pay for their daily fee. Thank you, teacher. Could you please talk about farmers? I want to know more about them. Could you speak louder, Jess? I'm so sorry, but I don't hear what you said correctly. I ask you to talk about what farmers work for every day. Hmm, let me see. I think that farmers have to do a lot of things during the day. In the morning, they get up early and start their work day by feeding the animals. Farmers often feed chickens, ducks, sheep, rabbits, cows, and so on. After that, they water their trees. It may take them a lot of time and energy. When the fruit is ripe, they will harvest it and sell it to the merchants. Similarly, they will sell the animals when they grow up. Besides, farmers have to protect their plants from bad weather. It seems to be a difficult task for them. This is some information about farmers' daily life. Thank, Thank you, you, teacher. teacher. Who has any questions for me about jobs? No, we don't. Okay, our lesson ends here. Please remember to do your homework. I'll check it in the next day. Now, you can go home. Goodbye, Goodbye teacher. teacher. Bye, see you next time. At the hair salon. Having haircut and nails done is always a favorite of the majority of women. Let's watch the video to see some conversations in a hair salon. Situation 1. How to stop hair loss. Hi Julia! Long time no see! How are you? Hey Stella, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. What would you like to have done today? I would like to have my hair cut and my nails done. Let me take care of your hair first, please. Take a seat here. Okay. How would you like your hair cut? Just a bit shorter to get my split ends fixed. How much would you like to be taken off? How about this much? Two inches? Okay, sounds great. Your hair seems a bit thin. I remember it was thicker before, wasn't it? You're right. I've been losing a lot of hair lately. Any reason for that? Maybe it's because I'm so stressed and lack of sleep? Stella, you're a hair expert. Do you have any idea about how to reduce hair loss? Well, obviously, first thing is to de-stress. Other than that, you should not brush your hair while it's wet. Avoid rubbing your hair dry with a towel. Just let it dry naturally. You can try to use biotin shampoo or take some vitamins to help your hair grow quicker. Those are basic kinds of stuff. Thanks a lot, Stella. I will try. Okay, your hair is done. How does it look? Great as usual. Okay, please move to the nail room. What would you like to do with your nails today? 
May I have a manicure with short nails and a round shape? Sure. Which colors or any particular pattern would you like? This one looks refreshing. Brilliant choice. Done. How do you feel? It looks amazing, Stella. My pleasure. I'm glad you're satisfied with it. Situation 2 Having hair dyed. Hi! How are you? How may I help you today? Hi, I'm great, thank you. I would like to have my hair dyed. Which color would you like? I'm not sure. Could you suggest a color that matches my medium skin tone? Sure, in that case, I think honey brown and blonde balayage will fit you best. Can you show me a photo of that hair color? Sure, this is a photo from one of my customers. Wow, her hair looks stunning. I love that brown color fading into buttery blonde tones. Let's do this. However, since your hair has a dark color and balayage requires lightening, I will need to have some part of your hair bleached. Is that okay? Is it bad for my hair? The bleach part will be drier. However, consider that you have pretty strong hair. I think it's okay as long as you can take care of your hair well. Anyway, I will apply conditioner treatment on your hair after everything is done to protect it. Do you have any hair care products? Yes, we have. I will introduce them and guide you on how to care for your hair later. Is that okay? Sure, let's do it. Okay, please come over here. Is water okay for you? Yes, it is. Thanks. By the way, your skin looks glowing and so healthy. Do you have any tips for skincare? Thanks for your compliment. I have to say, mainly because I drink a lot of water and put on sunscreen every day. Oh really? That's simple. Right? But not many people remember to drink enough water. Other than that, I always put on body lotion after a shower and sleep early. Okay, I got it now. Thanks for your tips. Get a wavy haircut. Hi, welcome. How may I help you? Hi, I would like to get a haircut. Okay, please have a seat. Here's your water. Okay, thank you. How would you like your hair cut? Do you have any preference yet? Not sure. I have had long hair for quite some time. Maybe I would like short hair. However, I'm not sure if it fits my face. My face is a bit round. No worry. There are a lot of short hairstyles which can be suitable for your face type. Let me show you some styles to see which one you prefer. Okay. About the length, you better have shoulder length hair. Shorter than that will make your face look bigger. Would you like curly or do you prefer straight hair? Curly ones look great though. Do you think so? Like this one? Yes, this is a long bob style with wavy hair. It suits you even more because your hair is a bit thin. Your hair will look bouncy with curly hair and your face will look smaller as well. That sounds exactly what I want. <laughs> okay, let's do this. I will go prepare for a bit. Please, wait for me for a few minutes. Okay, no problem. Thank you. 
Fix the nail. Hi, welcome. How may I help you today? Hi, I'm Jolie. I have an appointment to fix my nail today at 5 p.m. Okay, let me check. Hmm. All right, Miss Miley will take care of you. Please, go this way. Miss Miley, Miss Jolie came. Hi, Jolie. Nice to see you. How are you? Hi, Miley. Not bad. Nice to see you too. How are you? I'm great. I saw in the appointment note that you have a broken nail, don't you? Yes. Finally, I can meet you. I need to have it fixed. I've had that broken nail for a few days, but I was on a business trip. Okay, let me fix that for you. What happened? Did you get hurt? Oh, it's okay. I was in a hurry, banging my finger on the edge of a door. Luckily, no bleeding. Well, I'm glad to hear that you didn't get hurt, but it must be uncomfortable, right? Not really, but. You know me. I'm a perfectionist. I can't stand having a broken nail. Okay, please take a seat here. Could I have my hair washed and massaged first? I'm a bit tired after the trip. I came straight here after coming back from work. I think I need to relax first. Sure. Then please move to the shampoo station first. Okay. Herbs and spices. Linda and Jane are learning about herbs and spices for cooking and healthcare in daily life. Watch the video and learn the name of herbs and spices they mention. Situation one: Favorite herbs and spices. Hi, Linda. What are you doing? Hi, Jane. I'm cooking for lunch. Oh wow! I see you have a lot of thyme. What will you do with them? Ah, these are my favorite herbs when cooking. Whenever I make something, especially bake or stew something, surely I use it. That sounds good. Do you like herbs for cooking? Um, not really, to be honest. I find them quite hard to mix with ingredients. Really, I think it's quite interesting. It boosts the taste and smell of the dish greatly. I thought so too, and I tried. Maybe I mixed the ingredients together the wrong way. It was pretty bad. I don't think I'm good at cooking. Each herb or spice is suitable for each particular dish. If you mix it wrong, the taste will be difficult to eat. For example, thyme, my favorite one. It is especially suitable for dishes that will require a long cooking time, such as baking or stewing. It will create an aroma like a combination of sweet and a little spicy. Oh, I had no idea about that. What ingredients will you cook with them? There are a lot of things such as carrots, potatoes, tomatoes, beef. Chicken, lamb, onion. Amazing. Yes, I also love some pepper mill on the stew. It smells really good. Ah, I tried it. Pretty good. Absolutely, pepper mill will make your dishes better because it has a special spicy taste, not too strong. People who can't eat spicy food can also try it. Great. You are very knowledgeable about cooking. Hey, it's my hobby. Situation two: Buy ingredients in the supermarket. Hi, Jane. Long time no see. Hi, Linda. What are you doing here? I'm buying some ingredients to prepare to make a beef steak for dinner. 
My dad really loves it, but this is the first time I tried to make it on my own. That sounds really good. So what have you bought? Not much. I just have beef, sugar, and... What is that? Uh, salt. Oh, I don't know how to make it. I think it's quite easy. I've learned the recipe on the internet. The most important thing is having enough ingredients, including herbs and spices. Amazing! So what are they? <laughs> Beef, of course. <laughs> yeah, I know. And sugar, salt, chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder, and turmeric. Oh my god, a lot of things! Yes. Is that enough? No. You also need fresh herbs. Fresh herbs? What are they? They taste best when sprinkled over meat just before serving. They taste fantastic with steak, burgers, and any grilled beef. That sounds great. So what kinds of them we need? Chives, basil, coriander, parsley. What do you need them for? Well, they are marinated with beef to make the flavor more fragrant. How about thyme? I've heard beefsteak can't taste good if it doesn't have it. That's right, I am finding them. Here! So many things! I think it's enough. Other things I already have at home. Ah, I forgot! Cinnamon! It really takes a lot of time pre to prepare the ingredients. But cooking the dish is quite easy. Okay. When we have free time, can you teach me to cook it? Sure! Thanks! New Year's Resolution Simple Future Tense New Year symbolizes motivation for many new beginnings. New Year's resolution is a promise a person makes for the new year. It is when we all make plans to change our life for the better. Do you have any resolutions for the new year yet? What is it? Julia, Bella, Louis, and Daniel meet at the bar they usually go to on New Year's Eve. Let's see what resolutions our characters make for the new year. Cheers. Cheers! What time is it, Daniel? It's 10 p.m. Two hours left until 2022. I feel so excited. Shall we make New Year's resolutions? That's right. We make New Year's resolutions every year. Aw, oh, come on. I don't want to talk about it. Why? Let's do it together. Yeah, it will be fun. So, Louis, what will be your New Year's resolution? I will lose weight. Last New Year's Eve, you also said that you would lose weight. And now, you are still the same. No, you're wrong. What does it mean? Last year, I was 180 pounds. Now, I'm 179 pounds. <coughs> really? One pound? <laughs> you have no idea how tempting food can be. I know, but you need to lose weight, bro. Being too fat is not good for your health. I know. I will plan to lose weight. I'll have a perfect body. A fit body also makes it easier for you to find a girlfriend. And you, Daniel? Don't ask me about that. I haven't asked yet. I know what you're going to ask. Okay. Bella, what New Year's resolutions do you make? I'll complete the incomplete goal from 2021. Great. A big goal takes two years to complete. No, it should have been done in 2020. Because I set this goal in 2019. 
Oh, it's been three years? 2019, 2020, 2021. Yeah, this year I will definitely complete my goal. I believe you. Thank you. And Julia, how about you? I will eat clean and wake up at 5.30 a.m. every day. I'll sign up for a yoga or meditation course. That's cool. Daniel? No, Louis. I won't answer questions regarding New Year's resolutions. Why? What's wrong with you? Nothing at all. Come on, we're best friends. Just share with us. I need to go to the restroom. What's wrong with him? No idea. Ah, uh, um, I remember. What is what it? What is it? Last year, Daniel divorced his wife. He made a New Year's resolution to forget her. Ah, uh, I remember too. He hasn't forgotten her yet. He still misses her. Why did they divorce? She left for a month, then she came back. She said she wanted a divorce without saying why. Why did she do that? Daniel must be very sad. No idea. Is that Daniel's ex-wife? It's her. What a coincidence. You guys are Daniel's friends, right? Yes. Hi, Mary. Good evening. You recognize me. Of course. Will Daniel come? I don't know. He said he was very busy. Yes, he is so busy. Hi, I'm back. Hey, bro. Long time no see. How have you been, Daniel? Good to see you again. It's been a long time. What's wrong with you guys? Hi, Daniel. <gasps> Why are you here? I just want to say hello. Okay. Have you talked about New Year's resolution yet? Yes, I will lose weight. I will complete my goal. I will eat clean. And you, Daniel? Daniel will not answer that question. I will forget you. <gasps> and you, Mary? What will be your New Year's resolution? I will apologize to Daniel and ask him to forgive me. Mary? Yes? I was wondering, shall we have dinner tomorrow? I'm free at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Can I pick you up? Old address. I'll be there. I have to go. My friends are waiting for me. Okay. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What just happened? Daniel and Mary are going on a date tomorrow night. Do you still want to forget her, Daniel? I guess I must break my New Year's resolution. Will you two get back together? Maybe. No. I want to hear her explain first. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Simple future tense. We use simple future with will to predict the future. 
promises, requests, refusals, offers. We can use it for future facts and for things that are less certain. Form, affirmative, subject plus will, I'll plus base form. Example, I will lose weight. I will eat clean. I'll sign up for a yoga or meditation course. Negative, subject plus will not, won't plus base form. Example, Daniel will not answer that question. I won't answer questions regarding New Year's resolutions. Question, will plus subject plus base form. Example, will Daniel come? What will be your New Year's resolution? Shall is used mainly in the forms shall I and shall we. You use it when you want to get someone's opinion, especially for offers and suggestions. Example, shall we make New Year's resolutions? Shall we have dinner tomorrow? Arranging an appointment. There are many ways to arrange an appointment. It depends on each specific situation. Let's watch the video to learn how to arrange an appointment in several situations. At the dentist. Hello. How can I help you? Afternoon. I would like to book an appointment with Dr. John, please. Dr. John Thomas? Yes, Dr. John Thomas from International Dental Hospital. Do you have any re-examination notes or anything? No, my son has a toothache, so maybe his tooth has to be removed, I think. I cannot tell you anything in advance. You should bring him here to check first. Dr. John's schedule is full today. I can arrange an appointment for you tomorrow. What time is better for you? His schedule is full today? Oh my god. My son is really in pain. That sounds bad. Do you want to arrange an appointment with another doctor? All our doctors have had the experience of more than three years. He can come at 5 p.m. after his school. Is anyone available at that time? We have two doctors who have free time, Dr. Alex and Dr. Polly. Any advice, please? Polly is better for children because she is more open-armed. Okay, so please, I would like to arrange an appointment at 5 p.m. Can I have your name, please? Grace. Grace Shelby. And your son's name? Robert. Okay, so Ms. Shelby, you have an appointment at 5 p.m. with Dr. Polly to check your son's, Robert, teeth. Please keep this note and come on time. Thank you so much. Rescheduling. Nice to meet you today. Nice to meet you too. My manager wants to have a meeting in our office. Would it be possible to meet you to discuss the coming project? That'd be great. I will bring all our paperwork to show him at the meeting. Because the project needs to be done soon, I would like to set up the meeting tomorrow. Is that okay for you? Tomorrow? Yes, do you have enough time to prepare your paperwork, especially the contract? If everything goes well, we can sign the contract immediately after the meeting. Tomorrow is okay. Our assistant can complete the documents within today. What sort of time would suit your manager? How does 2 p.m. sound to you? He has an internal meeting in the morning. That sounds great. Can you please write me an email to confirm? Sure, I will email you immediately when I'm back in my office. 
Have a nice day. You too. Hey, sir. I arranged an appointment with our partner at 2 p.m. tomorrow. I'm writing an email to confirm them now. Oh, I just accepted an invitation to come to a workshop at 1 p.m. I'm afraid that I cannot come back at 2. Let's reschedule it. 3 p.m. is better. I got it, sir. Hi, Mr. Harry. I'm John from MM Company. Oh, hi, Mr. John. I just spoke with my manager. I'm very sorry, but something urgent has come up. And he won't be able to meet you tomorrow at 2. Can we make another time? Sure, absolutely. Would 3 p.m. suit you? 3 p.m. sounds fine. We will still meet in your office? Yes, I apologize for any inconvenience. Don't say that. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. In a real estate office. Hi, it's the Queen Real Estate. May I help you? Hello, I just saw your advertised post on the internet. Ah, uh, yes. Besides the houses that we posted, we have many houses that may match your requirements. Did you notice any houses, or should I give you some suggestions? I saw this one. It looks so nice. Ah, the houses in the HH area. This house is not available anymore, unfortunately. The owner just sold it one month ago. We still have many houses available for sale. Can I know your requirements, please? 60 square meter at least, in the A district. It should be near the supermarket and school. I have two kids, so it's so important. Anything else, please? In the east of the city, please. Okay, I noted your information. I will check our available houses and contact you back soon. Can we arrange an appointment to discuss more? When do you think you can find this suit house for me? It's really quick. I just need one or two days. So can we meet this Friday? That sounds great. 2 p.m. in the afternoon is okay for you, isn't it? It is easier for me to take off work in the afternoon. Oh, if it's not convenient for you, we can meet on the weekend. That would be better. I can come at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Cool. See you then. See you. Bye. Confess to your crush. Friends threw a small party on the weekend at Laura's house. They ate and talked. After a while, Laura suggested everyone play some mini-games together. Let's see what mini-games our friends play. It's fun today. I love weekend parties. I've prepared some mini-games for us. Let's play together. Of course! We need games at parties. How's the game, Laura? I have a box. It contains pieces of paper with questions and challenges. In turn, we'll take a piece of paper from the box and we'll make the request written on it. It's the game I like! I hope we don't get weird requests. Don't worry, it will be fun. We can make all these requests. And the person who completes the request, well, can choose one of the gifts I have prepared. Wow! Gifts! I want to win! Oh, and the loser will donate $10 to our future parties. All of us have to fulfill the request. Don't refuse or change the request, okay? Okay! Let's start it, Laura. From left to right, first is Tom, then Jack, me, Jenny, and finally is Mina. Okay, 
Give me the box. I play first. This game is so interesting. Let's see, what is Tom's mission? Let's read your request out loud, Tom. Give me an irrelevant answer. Laura will ask me five questions. My mission is to give irrelevant answers to Laura's questions. For example, when I ask, do you like blue or white? You cannot answer, I like blue or any color. You have to answer, it's 2 p.m. or the neighbor's dog is so cute. When I ask, you have to answer quickly. If you're slow, you'll lose. Oh, I get it. It's easy. I'll win and get your gift, Laura. Start it. What time is it? Tomorrow I'll eat hamburgers for breakfast. What did you say? What will you eat for breakfast, Tom? It's too hot today. If it's hot, we can go swimming together. Yesterday I stayed up till 11 p.m. Why did you stay up till 11 p.m.? You have beautiful eyes. So, do you want to be my boyfriend? Yes. Wow, what did you say, Tom? Really? Do you like Laura? It's just a game. I pretend to lose. Whatever, but give me $10 for the next party. Okay, here's $10. Wow, Tom's good. Tom played well until he wanted to be Laura's boyfriend. Ha 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 ha. Continue. The next player is Jack. This game is so fun. Give me the box. Must answer yes or you're right to any sentences your friends tell me. If you can't, you lose. Oh, it's so easy. I'm first. Watch my attack. You're always ugly, Jack. Look at the shirt you're wearing. It looks like an old-fashioned shirt. <laughs> Calm down, Jack. It's just a game. Ha ha ha. Okay, it's just a game, so you're right, Mina. Wow, Jack plays the game well. Next is me, Jack. You love Tom very much, don't you? You asked easily. Yes, you're right. I love Tom so much. My friend, hug me, Tom. No, never. Don't touch me. Next is me. Okay, Jack, the truth is, the jokes you tell are not funny at all, but you always think you're funny. You're good, okay. Yes, Laura. <laughs> Today's your bad day. Next is me, hey, Jack. You told me yesterday that you have a crush on Jenny, right? Because she has such a lovely voice and beautiful hair. It's just a game. Yes, okay. I win. Where's my gift? Wow, this game makes me so mad. I wrapped all the gifts. Let's open it later. Your stamina is really good. It's just a game, don't think too much. You're humorous. I'm not sure, I told the truth. What, really? No, ha ha ha. Continue. The next player is Laura. Go to the front door. Open the door and shout, I'm a stupid girl. I'm the best stupid girl in the world, three times. And stand there for about ten seconds. What? <laughs> Who wrote this mission? You, just you. Interesting. Do it, Laura. I'm the best stupid girl! I'm the best stupid girl in the world! I'm a stupid girl! 
I'm the best stupid girl in the world. What a shame. One person passed by looking at me. <laughs> hey, don't laugh. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. Hurry, come on. You have one more time. I'm a stupid girl. I'm the best stupid girl in the world. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come in, close the door. Oh my god, so embarrassing. And I receive a gift from myself. Next is Jenny. Take a breath. Okay, my mission is call your mom and say you love her so much. Oh, what a sweet mission. If it's my mission, when I say I love my mother, I'm sure of this, she will say, did you spend all my money again? Let's see what Jenny's mom will say. Turn on speakerphone for us to hear. Hi, darling. You're at Laura's home for the weekend, right? What's going on? Mom, I'm calling to say I love you so much. You're playing a game, right? No, Mom, no games at all. I'm telling the truth. I love you so much. I know. I love you too. Have fun and don't come home late. Yes, Mom, I will. See you. Love you. Oh, so sweet. Your turn, Mina. Confess to your crush. I don't know if Mina likes anyone. The game is getting more and more interesting. You have to confess to your real crush. I know. It's an opportunity to say I like him. <gasps> You're so brave. Will you confess? I'll call him. He's a friend of my brother's. Turn on the speakerphone. We want to hear too. Maybe he likes you too. Hello, who's that? Hi, I'm Mina. Oh, who is Mina? Ah, I remember. Are you Vincent's sister, right? Yes, that's right. Why did you call me? Say something. Your brother and I just finished playing basketball. He may be on his way home. Um, we were training for the tournament, so it's a bit late. Don't worry. Thanks for letting me know. I have something I want to talk to you about. Okay, I'm listening. Actually, I have a crush on you. I like you. <gasps> wow, she told him. When? I mean, when did you have a crush on me? When I went to pick up my brother at the basketball court, I saw you. You look great. You're so cool when you play basketball. Thank you. You're so cute, too, but... Who are you talking to? My friend. Is it a girl? I hear a girl's voice. What did she say? Why did you blush? No, I'm not. Do you have something to hide from me, right? Who is she? May I ask, who is she? Uh, thank you for your compliment. Uh, thanks for having a crush on me, but I'm sorry, I, I already have a girlfriend. Yeah, I know. I'm just playing a game with my friends. It's a weekend party. My mission is to say I love you to the first person in my telephone directory. That's you, Andrew with an A. Oh, it's an interesting game.
I hope you won and didn't get punished. No, I lose. I'm sorry to trouble you. Bye bye. Are you okay, Mina? You don't lose. You won. Here's your gift. Don't be sad. This is my gift. I'll give it to you. Let's keep it. A bad game. Don't play anymore. Thanks to the game, I can do two things I never thought possible: confess to my crush and give up on him. I feel fine. Let's drink something. Okay. okay. Let's go to the museum. The weekend is a time for us to rest after a tiring work days. Read a book and enjoy a cup of coffee. Clean the house and cook delicious foods or meet friends. Let's see what activities our characters choose for the weekend. Jennifer, tomorrow is Saturday. It's the weekend. Shall we go out together? I'm not sure about Saturday, but Sunday is okay. Are you free on Sunday? Yes, I'm free on Sunday. What will we do on that day? Do you have any suggestions? Let me think. Let's eat together. Then. We'll go shopping and find a nice cafe shop to look at all of the new things that we just bought. We went shopping last week. My closet is almost full. Let's try something new for our weekend. Something new? Well, we just learned the history of France. How about going to a museum? I think it'll be interesting. But which museum? Louvre Museum. A hundred percent agree. I heard that the Louvre is a beautiful museum. What do you want to eat on Sunday? How about Thai food? Okay. Last week we ate Japanese food. This week try Thai food. I heard it's delicious, but a bit spicy. I love spicy food. So Sunday at ten a.m. I'll come to pick you up, okay? Okay. See you on Sunday. You're very on time. Exactly ten o'clock. Beautiful lady, please get in the car. I will be your driver today. My honor. Because today we go to the Louvre, so last night I researched this museum. Wow! So tell me, what do you know? When we get to the museum, I'll tell you. Not now. Okay. So excited! What time does the museum open today? It opens from nine a.m. to six p.m. on Mondays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. What about other days? On Wednesdays and Fridays, the museum opens at nine a.m. and closes at nine forty-five p.m. Closed every Tuesday. Going to the museum at night must be very beautiful. How about tickets? I'm glad you asked. The ticket purchased at the counter is fifteen euros. The online ticket is seventeen euros, but. But tickets are free for people under the age of eighteen and citizens aged eighteen to twenty-five who live in the countries of the European Economic Area. Oh, we get free tickets, and Thai food is so delicious. After we finish eating, let's go to the museum. Okay.
Oh my god, look at this museum. It's as beautiful as the picture I searched online last night. It was a good decision to come here. Hey, beautiful lady, I'll be your tour guide today. My honor. And my tour guide, what is that? What is that? Um, wait a minute. Oh, my tour guide. Are you searching on Google? Really? You said you researched all about the museum last night. That's correct. I researched all about the museum, but how do I memorize them all in one night? Okay, I see. This is the Louvre Pyramid. It's a large glass and metal pyramid designed by Chinese American architects. Okay, my tour guide. I got a map of the museum from the counter outside. Follow me. The Louvre is the world's largest art museum. The museum area is 210 square meters, with more than 60,600 square meters dedicated to the collection. What collections are there? I don't know. Why ask me? Hey, you're my tour guide today, remember? So, search on Google. Okay, okay, take it easy. I see. The museum is divided into eight areas for eight collections. Egyptian antiquities, Near Eastern antiquities, Greek Etruscan, Roman, Islamic art, sculptures, decorative arts, painting, prints, and drawings. Statue horses, statue swords, statue wings, so amazing. Look at this, Sarah. I know, no need to Google. Psyche was revived by Cupid's kiss. Ah, a love story of Cupid and Princess Psyche. Wow, how wonderful it is. What is this, Jennifer? The tour guide is asking visitors? Oh, if there's a tour guide review today, I will give you minus 100 points. I forgot, <laughs> okay. I'll try to get higher points. There's a note below the statue. Statue of Venus Milo. French is Venus de Milo. The statue is about 80 inches high. The statue is so tall. It's so luxurious. I love that chandelier. These are some rooms in the apartments of Napoleon III. Wow! Deluxe dining room, deluxe living room, deluxe toilet, truly amazing bedroom. Let's go to the painting area. Okay. Sarah, stop and look at her. Mona Lisa, tell me about her. It's an oil painting by artist Leonardo da Vinci. It has been believed to have been painted between 1503 and 1506. The Mona Lisa is now one of the most valuable paintings in the world. How much, Sarah? It holds the Guinness World Record for the highest known insurance valuation in history at $100 million in 1962. I guess it must be more expensive now. Who is Mona Lisa? Is she real or is she a character? The model is Lisa de Giacondo. She was a member of the Garadini family and the wife of a wealthy silk merchant. I heard Mona Lisa was stolen many times. Yes, it was stolen in 1911 by a Louvre employee. During the Second World War, the painting was stolen again.
Now Mona Lisa is owned by the French government. And now she's here. Yes, the lower part of the painting was damaged when a person poured acid on it. And a young man threw a stone at it. How could they treat a painting like that? I don't know. Maybe because it's so famous. Today, the Mona Lisa is considered the most famous painting in the world. A destination painting. When you're too famous, there will always be two forces around you. Fans and anti-fans. So are paintings. So are people. Mona Lisa created controversy for a while. I heard about that. Looking into her eyes, you'll see a lot of joy, optimism, love of life. But looking at her mouth and lips, it seems she's strangely serious, but also smiling. It's a mystery. How do you feel? I don't know. What do you see in this painting? You come here to meet her like this. Tell me something about her. You want to hear from me? Yes, of course. I see a lovely chubby lady. Her eyebrows are a bit pale, with no lipstick. I guess she forgot to put on mascara and no makeup before drawing. <laughs> You're so funny. I think in the past girls didn't wear much makeup. Her hands are cute. She is the lady of a rich family who's pampered. In short, I see a gentle and beautiful woman. So funny. Art is not what you see, but what you make others see. Edgar Degas, a French artist, said. Yeah, I think it depends on the viewer's visual feelings. Thanks for sharing information about this museum. Let's come back to visit the museum together on Wednesday or Friday to see the museum at night. Okay, it sure looks magical. So, how many points do you give me? With your effort today, I'll give you 10 points. 10 points are also good. <laughs> 10 points out of 100 points. Really? I'm just kidding. Next time, will you be my tour guide? No, forget about this, but I can be your driver. Okay, do you want to drink something? Sure, let's go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment on my video. Please subscribe to Learn English with Jessica channel to watch more helpful videos. Goodbye.